All right, guys, we are here in the Laidback Bike Report booth with my good friend Kelvin from Angle Tech. Kelvin, how are you? Good. Good to see you, Gary. It's always great to see you. Kelvin is always diligently coming to the shows, checking out all the new things. So he's got to talk to you if you really want to know what's going on. So, Kelvin, I was wondering if you'd give us a quick update. What's going on at Angle Tech these days? Well, we're very active. We remain doing all kinds of things, and every year everything changes. So we're just trying to keep up with the changes and make people happy. And you bring the whole crew, right? Is everyone here this no, time? this year it's a half crew because uh, moving the show to September, we're still busy in the shop. So uh, we got two guys back there and two of us here. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Well, basically I wanted to have you here to thank you so much uh, once again for all your continuing support over the years for the Laidback Bike Report, but specifically this year at CycleCon. So thanks for sponsoring us. Kelvin, it's always good to see you, pal. Good to see you, Gary. Okay, thank thanks. You. All right, take care. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. In the ATOC booth here with my pal Charlie. How you doing today, pal? Hi, Gary. It's I'm doing good. It's good to see you, and uh, we've got this amazing rack, the Draftmaster. Um, tell me a little bit about. Let's back up and talk a little bit about your history with this uh, with this organization. Okay. Well, I started the company back in the early '90s. Uh, not exactly recumbent related. We started in that I was riding tandems with a local friend who had the tandem. She's complaining about hard how hard it is to put it on her car to meet me for rides. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Darn it, Charlie, you're an engineer. Do something about this. Long story short, I did. When I went to make a couple in the garage for the two of us, her friends started lining up with their checkbooks. Can you make me one? And the business was born. Uh, a couple years later, we were doing so good. I said, I got to leave my day job in aerospace. I can't say no to this opportunity. I got to see what happens. And the rest is kind of history. Uh, then about 20 years ago, we bought out Draftmaster. Uh, the start, by the way, was with our topper roof racks, uh, tandem toppers, bike toppers. Um, and then we expanded with the Draftmaster line 20 years ago. Okay, sounds good. So maybe it's time to take a closer look at the uh, Draftmaster that sure. we have here. Tell us about some of the details and features that you would talk to a customer about. So the best way to think about a Draftmaster for those that are not familiar with it is think of it like a roof rack that's been slid back, tipped up, and mounted to a receiver hitch. And just like a roof rack, we have load bars or cross arms as we call it in all different widths and we put various combinations of doodads on those cross arms to accommodate your specific needs. So we don't custom manufacture, but we configure them to order as needed when the customer tells us what their needs are. And so we can set it up a thousand different ways. That said, of course, we have our list of a couple of dozen very common configurations that are requested. Um, this unit in particular, being at the recumbent CycleCon, or as it's now known, CycleCon, Cycle right. uh, is configured for one trike. Uh, we frequently get the question immediately of, well, can you do two trikes? Absolutely. Two trikes is the same as one trike, except you would have, it's wider, and you would have a trike here and a trike here, side by side. We can also do combinations. We get requests for a trike and a regular single bike, uh, a delta trike and a tadpole trike. Um, you know, we can do just about any combination you can think of. Now that you've intrigued our viewers about uh, the Draftmaster, if they wanted to purchase one, is this uh, something they would go to their local dealer for? Uh, sure. Uh, the short story here is we do a dual channel distribution. We do work direct with consumers. However, if we have an established dealer in your vicinity, we absolutely want you to go to a local dealer. The best way to get service is from someone who can work with you face to face, hands on with our product, and that's the brick and mortar dealers. And you can find our list of local dealers on our website, you can call us, and of course you're welcome to go into your favorite local trike shop or recumbent shop and ask for our products. Okay, yeah, atoc.com, yeah? atoc.com, also draftmaster.com. Okay, either way. Okay, lastly, I guess we'd like to see a little action here. So, like, okay. if you wanted to mount a, a trike on something like this, can you show us how that is done? Sure. Okay. So, we've already got the trike in the, what I call the preloaded situation uh, or position. 
Uh, to get it here, you typically just kind of swing the trike forward, bring the front end up, and I shove the back wheel underneath at the same time. It's uh, not as hard as it sounds. And then you maneuver it with the weight resting on the back wheel, so you're just balancing it until it's in this position. And then to get it into the driving position, uh, I'll demonstrate also. I push forward typically with my hips. It's a little different for people of different sizes, but there you go. And the effort to do that is about equal to lifting half the weight of your bikes. I thought you were gonna say half the weight of your body. So that's very, no, no. that's that's a lot less, no. that's good. <laughs> Definitely less. Not quite smooth and easy, a nice clicking, satisfying clicking sound at the end there, you know it's yep. secure. One detail about our rack is, remember, I'm an aerospace engineer and I understand redundancy and safety. Just the geometry of the rack keeps the trike slid down in and secured on the rack. By no means do we consider that adequate from a safety standpoint. So we also add a wheel strap for each and every wheel, okay. plus a safety strap that goes up and around the frame to keep it in and make sure it can't jiggle as, the, as you drive down the road and hit some bumps. A uh, very secure system. We've never heard of anyone having any problems with uh, the trike being secure on the rack. And I like to keep it that way. <laughs> Step back out of the shot. All right, it's down. So, here. One of the other, one of the other unique features of the Draftmaster is its modularity and quick neck capabilities. There's no other rack like this on the market. You can get into your car easily whether or not the rack is loaded with your bikes. And while we already have it all, the bike off, back of the car would be about here, and you simply swing the rack back and down, and now you can get into the back of your car no problem with or without the bikes on it. And when you're not using it, one of the unique features of our racks is the quick connect capability. So I just took the trike rail off, if you would hold that carry. You got it. And now the cross arms come off as well. And the bottom cross arm, which is small in this case, uh, but the bottom one comes off the same way. And then all you're left with is the parallelogram unit uh, bolted into your receiver hitch. And you can still, of course, swing that back to get in your car. If you want to take it off, you just unbolt it from the receiver. It's up to the consumer. Well, lots of options, uh, lots of configurations. It's, it's Absolutely. great, Charlie. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's wrap it there then from the ATOC booth. Charlie, thanks so much okay. for talking with us and showing you're everything welcome. about the Draftmaster, all right? <laughs> thanks, Pat. Thanks, Gary. Have right. a good day. You too. Guys, here we are in the Aza booth with my good pal, Hans Zagala. Hansa, how's it going? Welcome to uh, Ohio. Oh, thank you. It's, uh, it's been going very well. We have a dealer day, a dealer day at the show almost done. And uh, yeah, it, it's been a good good day so uh, far. All right, so Azeb has a nice large presence here and we have a couple of trikes to talk about. What are we gonna talk about today? So we will talk about the T-Trisec, which is our new model for the for short riders and for children, and then uh, about the new motors we have in the offer, including the automatic shifting. Uh, okay, let's yeah. get let's start with wherever you want to start. So okay, the T-Trisec is our uh, it's basically our basic model adjusted for short riders, starting four foot four, I guess, up to five eleven. Um, so we, we made it by shortening the front uh, front part of the frame, uh, using the shorter cranks, you know, doing some adjustments for short riders. Uh, we were we are quite surprised how well it has been received by the dealers. Uh, we visited on the tour and here as well because uh, there are not so many trikes for short riders available on the market. And still, this one ha has all the features we offer on our other bikes and trikes. So adjustable seat, you know, you can change the uh, the angle of the seat. You can sit pretty upright here, uh, but also pretty reclined. You can have optional folding hinge. You can have all the different disc brakes, drum brakes, you know, components and so on and so forth. So, yeah, 
this is we are even surprised surprised how well this model has been received uh, till now. Yeah. Very nice, a nice, a nice addition to the line. All right, and then over to the uh, tie fly. What do we have here? So this is the tie fly uh, 26, which is our uh, top model and also bestseller at least in the U.S. But the 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 interesting thing here is the, the new motor. So we are offering the new motors from Steps. It's the EP6 and EP801 uh, that have uh, 85 Newton meters, I guess. You know, uh, it's a pedal assist. But the other interesting thing is that they are now combined with the Q system derailleur, which is in this case a DI2 electronic shifting. So you not only can shift by just touching the buttons and you mm -hmm. don't, you know, it does not require any serious force, just you push buttons, but it can also shift automatically, which is nice because it's the first derailleur which can shift uh, automatically. The, the thing is that compared to Enviolo automatic, which is probably the most common automatic shifting or the Nexus 5E from Shimano. Mm -hmm. It has a wider range, slightly wider range than the Enviolo, so you can probably climb better some hills and so on. But it is also cheaper. So this set uh, is only $350 more expensive than standard 1x10 we would offer with the motor. But and you get an electronic shifting, you get automatic shifting, but you get also a cassette with wider range and a technology which is called Link Glide, which Shimano at least says it's at least three times more durable than standard cassettes. So it was really designed for ele electric bikes system, and yeah. uh, mid drive motors yeah. and so on. So we think that for 350 bucks it's a really good deal and you can not you can shift ma manually but you can switch to the automatic mode and then it shifts by itself. So right. that's so what we like. Lots of flexibility a derailleur automatic shifting system yeah. as opposed to the hub. So this is a very different kind of thing and then the uh, the advantage of the pricing as well. Yeah. That's great. And it's, you know, for many people, it's also, uh, it surprises that it downshift when you are coasting, you know, without moving pedals, and you slow down without moving the pedals, it turns the chain wheel by itself and it shifts and in shift. the back, you know, downshift. So you have to try it to see it, but uh, yeah, very, very nice. interesting system. Okay. And how would you, so I know you've ridden that and uh, and the hub uh, auto shifters too. So how do you like it compared to the uh, hub system? Yeah. So aside from the price. It's still, um, it's still a, a new system, so I haven't done much on it, but from what I have tried it, it works really nice. It's still, you know, if you are an experienced driver using the manual shifting, you would find the automatic transmission here and there a bit awkward or you would like to do something mm -hmm. by yourself when you want to do it. Same with the bikes. If you like to shift, if you like to play with the gears, you will find it, you know, sometimes doing things you don't really want to do, but in general, it's... Uh, Flawless. So, no, two great uh, products to talk about, very interesting stuff. I'm sure a lot of people be interested. So, Hansa, thank you so much for yeah. showing us around the Azo booth. And uh, again, I'm glad you're here in the States. Yeah, thank you for coming. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are in the Paquetta booth here at CycleCon 23 with my pal Dana Lieberman. Dana, hello. Hello, Gary. So, uh, you are a man of many hats. Uh, ben Up Cycles, of course, I the shop. I don't have your hat, but that's okay. I probably uh, do have $20 right there at the Layback Bike Report okay. booth. So, uh, yeah, you have acquired Baquetta. Yes, uh, a little over two years ago. Two years ago. So, a lot of work, I know, on your part to get things rolling. And uh, really, I, th I think we need an update. So, tell Absolutely. us uh, what you got here, what's been going on. Okay, so, there are really three things that we've changed about Paquetta. Uh, the easiest and the thing that we're featuring predominantly at the show is our new paint schemes. Uh, so before, 
Maqueda was you get what you get, you don't get upset. Now we offer five stock colors and an unlimited custom colors. And so here you can see our Dirty Magic Purple, Shocker Green, we've got more. Uh, they're just beautiful, radiant colors, trying to add a little, a little spice to the, to the mix here. That's the easy one. Uh, the other thing that we've moved to is a full custom model. So when you go to our website, you'll see that there's pull-down menus. You can pick your drivetrain, pick your seats, pick your brakes. Lots of choices, right? You can pick all of, all of the parts just like you would with uh, the other top shelf brands. But the thing that we're really introducing this show mm -hmm. is right here, the Paquetta Pronto. This is our first full real entry into the electric assist world where we have a frame that is fully integrated with electric assist. There's no more add-on aftermarket kits. The frame is designed and, and painted. All the cables are running internally. We're using the Bafang M510 motor kit which, is, as far as I'm concerned, is as smooth as a Bosch, which I find very smooth. Mm -hmm. But it has a little more giddy-up. At 95 newton meters of torque, it's really going to get you going. We can actually now say this is made in America. Nice. Yeah. We've, we do enough of the, the frame manufacturing that, yeah, it, it's even though the original frame came from Taiwan, no, we do enough welding and painting on this in addition to the assembly. So. Okay. So the Pronto is specifically an e-assist uh, bike, right? Correct. And then, of course, you have the non-assisted... Uh, That's the Giro right here. The Giro. So we, Same frame. Right. So, uh, Dana, I know that you have talked to me a little bit about uh, the Quattro, and I'm wondering what the... Tell us what that is sure. and the status. Okay, so first of all, a lot of people don't quite understand the name. I've had people say, wait, does that have four wheels or something like that? No. The last Carbon Arrow was the Carbon Arrow 3. Now we're onto the Carbon Arrow 4. What's 4 in Italian? Quattro, right? I was so going to say Bacchetta, but uh, that would have been wrong. Right, yes. and not Bacchetta. Yeah. So uh, with the Quattro, I'm making a number of changes that, quite frankly, I had made recommendations to Bacchetta before a number of years ago. Mm. We are lengthening the frame for better handling and better, better fit. Uh, and I could go into more details about that if you wanted, but really the idea is... Uh, to extend out the back end so that the riders that want to recline their seat have the full range of seat adjustment without getting their head behind the rear axle. Mm. Okay. We're also making it a very disc-specific bike with a larger head tube, so you run a tapered fork. Uh, it's designed to run larger tires, up to 40 millimeter tires. Um, and that's, that, those are really the difference. It doesn't sound like much, but that's where the rest of the bike world is at now. Quick right. release, oh, and through axle. That was the other through thing I was thinking. So of. these are updates that are modernizing this exactly. bike that was designed many years ago. Many years and this ago. is uh, and this is getting. So uh, my impression from what we talked about earlier was that this is very close. I know you, I think, had hoped even to have it here. But so when do you anticipate the? Quattro? They're going to be out in the spring. spring. Yeah. So right now they are still with my um, my CAD designer who is finalizing the the uh, the CAD design. In fact, I need to send them some pictures that I took today uh, to make a few changes. Then we send it off to get the molds made. And once I have those molds, I'm gonna post pictures and uh, show people what those look like. That should happen over about the next two months. Then we, or we get some sample frames in, right? That we're gonna do destructive testing on, make sure that they're strong enough, and then throw parts on them and make sure that they ride the way that we want them. If it's been done right, we shouldn't have to go through multiple iterations of that. At that point, we go, okay, send me 100 of these, and off they go. So right now what we're doing is we have a Kickstarter-esque style program mm -hmm. on our website. Mm -hmm. We are offering quite a substantial discount to early adopters, and we, it's going. People are buying them. People are really, really excited about this bike, as am I, noting that my Carbon Arrow 3 is here and for sale today. So you're ready to move on I'm to ready the to move on to the Quattro. Sounds good. All right, I guess finally, um, folks have been out test riding uh, the Pronto and the bikes. Well, you've been getting some good feedback. So that's that's what's really yeah. neat about this yeah. show. So is this the first time I've right. ever been at this show? I mean, I've ridden this, so but I'm clearly biased, right? I designed the bike, um, so it's really really cool. Right now, we have dealers today going mm -hmm. out and riding it, and the feedback has just been. Unanimously positive. Oh my God, it's so smooth. It, 
it, it's exactly what we want it to be like. That's, I'm and sure I that's... I've got to tell you, we, we had a lot of customers reaching out to us saying they switched to trikes because there were no two-wheelers with a real integrated electric assist system. And the only way they could get that was to go three wheels. So I'm hoping to get them back on two. The first batch of these will be uh, about no second week of November. Okay. And we're already taking orders and getting orders, and so we're really, really happy. Good. Okay. Well, all the best, and uh, I'm sure you'll do well with them. So. Thanks, Dad. Pleasure. Good to see you again. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Guys, we're back in the uh, Layback Bike Report booth with my good friend Tim from Bent Revolution down in Florida. Tim, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, Gary. What a great day. It feels like uh, winter up yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, it's so, well, for you in Florida it would be, but it's like in the 70s, guys. It's amazing here. Perfect weather. Uh, Tim may think that I'm following him around the world because the last time we uh, put a mic in, in front of you, uh, we were at Spetsy in Germany, weren't we? Yeah, auf Deutschland, yeah. Indeed. So uh, we'll have that translated. You'll be able to see the captions underneath, folks. So, Tim, tell us what's going on at Bet Revolution these days. Well, Gary, we've picked up uh, Azub as another brand, so we're really excited about that. Now we've got Ice, Azub, Trident, HP Velotechnic, and I already said Ice, but you can list them twice, and uh, Cruise Bike. Um, and I think that's it. But a so, wide range of, of trikes and bikes. I was just going to say, so not a very wide range of things for your customers to choose from. So that's wonderful. Yeah, so they can try out so many different things, wow. which is which is what everyone tells new uh, uh, recumbent riders to do, right? Isn't that what you would tell them? Yeah, you don't want to just say, this one gets good reviews. Um, I've had people come in saying, hey, this bike gets good reviews. I'm like, yeah, it's good for somebody who's... 300 pounds, but you would need a friend to ride with you to get to that level. But yeah, so it's it's good to try it out for yourself, see what fits you, see what seat you want, what kind of drivetrain, and then take care of it from there. Sounds good. Well, Tim, I really uh, wanted to uh, bring you to the booth to uh, especially thank you for your years of support, of course, but specifically for you supporting us here at CycleCon this year by sponsoring us. Uh, at the show to do these interviews, making it all possible. I really appreciate it. Happy to do it. Thanks for covering the show. Okay. Real good. Thanks, Deb. Thanks. All right, pal. Guys, we're here at the Bike Different booth with my pal Chris. So we talked last year, Chris, That's about right. some innovative uh, bike products that yes. you have uh, put together. That's right. And I think we have some updates to talk about. We so do. Let's, uh, let's go there. Let's talk about the bike. What's okay. going on with it? Well, I've got some brand new uh, parts and components to this bike that you won't find on any other bike in the world. Uh, you know, I named my company Bike Different for a reason because there's a lot of different parts, components on this bike you won't find anywhere else. So starting out with the seat. This, is, this seat is actually a RAND seat, I have to be honest. I bought this from uh, uh, Kara and, and uh, Nichols, Nick, yes. Nichols uh, yes. the, the Phoenix bikes. Yes. But it, so the seat back reclines and the seat uh, base tilts, and it also moves back and forth. It's adjustable on the top tube. So you adjust it for whatever size legs the rider has. And then on the back, you've got, uh, this is a system I've come up with. I call it the dual hydration. Uh, uh, aqua tubes where you can just pull them out and and bite on the bite valves take a drink of whatever you have in there whether it's bourbon or whiskey or whatever you're drinking I recommend water <laughs> anyway so that's the the hydration system I've come up okay. with it's a compact long wheelbase bike mm -hmm. shorter wheelbase uh, and you got a 24 inch wheel in the back 16 inch wheel in the front now I built this for urban commuters who want to ride a city bike through urban traffic. So it's got a nice, low, sloping top tube. Makes it easy to swing your leg over, get on the bike, and put your feet on these nice pedals, which I'll tell you all about in a minute. Uh, and, and get your feet down if you need to. And get your yes. feet down quickly, right. So that makes it nice and easy to get on, put your feet on and off the pedals. So, uh, and it's also got a very steep head tube angle, which makes it very uh, maneuverable, so when you're going through city traffic, you can easily turn it with a touch of a feather, real easy to turn. Uh, so, and when I come out with my touring version, it's gonna have a, a shallower head tube angle to give it that really nice straight tracking, stable tracking you want when you're on your long distance bike tours. Okay, so now we've moved to the back of the bike yep. and we're gonna talk about the rack, and, yes. and what else, what do you got going on here? Well, we've designed this frame to be integrated with the Topeak 
rack and bag system, which we think is the best uh, ba bag and rack system out there, mm -hmm. uh, because you can easily just slide the, the pannier bag onto the rack, it clicks in, and you just press a button and it slides right back off. All right, Chris, so we're gonna take a closer look at these very unusual pedals. What's, uh, what's going on with these? Well, these pedals, we call them barefoot pedals because they're so comfortable, you can ride on them with your bare feet. Now, that's not to say you can't ride on them with regular shoes, because you can. In fact, they're so comfortable, you can ride on them with your uh, bare feet, with your stocking feet, with your sandals, flip-flops, soft-soled shoes like these topsiders, or uh, street shoes. Anything but bike cleats or high-heeled Barbie shoes. Don't wear those. But these are... In my opinion, these are the most comfortable bicycle pedals you will ever put your feet on. And uh, they're only made by Bike Different. All right, now if they want to come to you for barefoot pedals and maybe find out more about the bike and stuff, where does my viewer go to find out more? Well, they've got to come to me. Uh, right now, I'm a wholesaler. I only sell to the retailers, the bike shops. So I've been meeting a lot of dealers here at the show who tell me they want to carry Barefoot, barefoot pedals in their shops. So I'm going to be supplying a lot of the recumbent dealers with barefoot pedals. So check with your local dealers and you should be able to find the, the bike different products. Exactly. You just ask them for bike barefoot pedals and have them give me a call and I'll uh, custom make them to fit the bottoms of your feet and I'll ship them over to the bike shop uh, to fit on your feet. All right, Chris, so uh, let's just finish up if we could then with a little peek into the future. I know you've got uh, you have lots of ideas, obviously. Uh, they just keep coming to you, dude. So uh, something in mind for next year. Can you give us a hint about uh, BikeWise, I think? What, what's sure. going to be coming next year? Sure. First of all, for next year, we're going to get rid of the, the handlebars, and we're going to replace them with an armrest steering system. If you go to my website, you'll see a picture of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a bike that you steer by just placing your forearms on these nice padded armrests, that have this leaf spring suspension so that they kind of bounce up and down. They've got a, a, a memory foam damping in the middle. And so that when you lean the seat back, you, they will also, the, the armrest will lean back too. So you'll be able to shift with your click shifters here. You'll be able to brake here. Your arms are basically at rest on the armrests. So all your energy is going into your feet pedaling, moving the crank. All right, and I recommend uh, that the viewer's energy goes into checking out what, bikedifferent.com? Go to bikedifferent.com and you'll see all of these products for sale uh, at your local bike store. Uh, and uh, right now we're still working on upgrading our website. It will be up and running with all these new products very soon. Very good. Chris, good. thanks pal. Hey, it's good welcome. to see you again. All right, guys, uh, back outside here at CycleCon uh, with uh, Zach. I represent Vapor Propulsion Labs, and we distribute Bosch and Pinion and Supernova and 3x3 internal gear hubs, so different type of drivetrain uh, systems and, and lighting systems for bikes and trikes. Okay, very interesting. And uh, so we've seen, I'm sure, a, a number of these in our travels around the, uh, the event. So let's get into some specifics. Let's start with uh, Bosch Motors. Um, we have seen lots of Bosch motors on various products. So if you could start out by letting us know who you uh, collaborate with, uh, with these motors, and then we'll talk more specifically about the motor. Yeah, so we uh, work with our friends at TerraTrike and CatTrike. And um, basically from a, from a motor standpoint, there, you can see on these trikes, there's uh, either kits that can add uh, a, a motor system to a boom and uh, a bolt-on battery or a trike that is already electrified to begin with. Good. So now, early on, uh, when uh, there were a lot of e-assists being put on uh, trikes, we noticed that Bosch seemed to be the one. This is where everybody started. Now we're starting to see some other uh, manufacturers in there. Why would Bosch be the best choice uh, to put on their trike or bike? You know, for me, it comes down to uh, the service, the accessibility of spare parts, the, uh, the, the accessibility of spare parts eight years from now, 10 years from now. Can you, get a, can you get a replacement battery? Can you get a replacement motor? What is the longevity of your vehicle and the parts availability 
And, and from a Bosch standpoint, it's Bosch is an automotive company. Everybody knows Bosch from the spark plugs and the windshield wipers and, the, and you know, your appliances in home. All that stuff is very well known. Uh, and they brought a lot of that automotive expertise into the mobility expertise. And they have this philosophy that if you, if you have a system, you should have parts available in the future. And, and so in the mobility side of things and the e-bike side of things, when this particular motor stops production, there will be availability of those spare parts for a minimum of eight years from Bosch. And at the end of that period, it then goes to an aftermarket third party. So you have this timeline of availability that is, that's, that's basically number one. Right. And number two, uh, being able to service these, there's uh, over 5,000 dealers in, in the U.S. and Canada that have the uh, training to be able to, to work on them. So if someone is, is buying these from a dealer, they can always get service from that dealer. But if they're traveling, there's a good chance that they've got a dealer close by that's also trained. That is no small thing, Zach. And so you have the... Uh, the comfort of knowing that these are trained people at these uh, bike shops that know about these motors can take care of it and the parts part of it, right? So right, right, Bosch right. is not going anywhere uh, for those of you who know the company. So, All right, Zach, so now we're back inside and we're looking at a gear system, pinion gearing. So maybe, uh, Zach, if you wouldn't mind, let's uh, go all the way back to the beginning and explain what a pinion gear system is about. Why would you put that on your bike? What does it replace? Well, there's the complexity of a derailleur and a cassette system, especially on a trike, that, that can that can complicate things. So what this does is this con consolidates the whole drivetrain into a pretty small gearbox. It comes in a six speed, a nine speed, a 12 or an 18 speed. Uh, it comes in a mechanical twist shift like you see here. And, and in a second, we'll show you the, the E-shift system. But basically, as you change the, the indicator on the on the grip shift, you're changing the engagement of gears inside of the box and then the speed of the output driver here. It's either a belt drive or a chain drive. It's a sealed system with uh, an oil bath inside. Every 6,200 miles you do a, an oil change and uh, it's totally serviceable. It's basically a gearbox for life. Um, and uh, we can do the, the refurbishments here in the United States. Dealers can do the oil changes uh, themselves, and um, we can also take a gearbox that's been in the field and say, you know, 20, 30,000 miles are on that gearbox. We can bring it back and bring it back to quote unquote new. So it's a it's an alternative uh, drivetrain that we're pretty excited to represent in the in the U.S. and Canada, and uh, you'll see a few different uh, variants here at the show. Awesome. So totally replaced your derailleurs, right? I mean, it's. Uh it's simplicity itself and uh, it sounds like reliability as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly, yeah. All right, Zach, so now uh, I guess the latest here, uh, tell me what we yeah, have. This just started in production in Germany and so if, if people want to look at something that further simplifies the, uh, the plumbing as, you, as it were on, the, on, a, on a trike, they could go with an e-shift system. So inside of the gearbox, you've got the same uh, nine or 12 uh, speed shifting mm -hmm. and now you've got an e-shift version as well so a simple uh, wire that goes back to the to the gearbox so we're pretty excited about this this is going to start coming to the u.s in uh, november okay late november yeah so we'll probably start seeing these on uh, bikes and trikes maybe early next year huh that's that is correct so zach thanks a lot for showing us around hey. with bosch and pinion uh, yep. really interesting stuff thanks happy to be here okay. thanks all right, guys, we are here at the Cat Trike booth here at CycleCon with my buddy Mark. How are you today? I'm doing good, Gary. Thanks. It's always good to see you. Yeah, it's great to see you and great to see Cat Trike here at CycleCon. So uh, we're going to talk about a, a few things, Mark, starting out with this uh, newer model, uh, kind of wider, heftier. What do we have here? Yeah, it's our new Cat Trike uh, Max. It's been on the market about six months now. Um, sales are really good, very welcoming to all of our Cat Trike dealers. So it's got a wider seat. It's two inches wider than our standard Cat Trike. A um, little higher center of gravity. And then to keep the stability really nice, we made the track 34 inches, so it's a little wider. Um, still has a really nice wheelbase. 
Um, we did a one by 11 drivetrain on it to make it super simple, very user friendly. And then also we've added um, our assist bars, which is a new accessory, but this comes standard on this trike. All right, Mark, so I know a huge part of your business now, as with most other manufacturers, has to do with e-assist. So tell us the latest on e-assist to cat trike. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've been at it a couple years. Um, we went with the Bosch system. It's a class one, uh, 250 watt, um, 400 um, watt hour battery, uh, class one, 20, 20 mile an hour. Um, just a beautiful system. We've had so little problems with them. The guys at VPL that um, supply our Bosch system are very helpful. Um, we worked with a manufacturer on the Space Coast to do the wiring harness um, splicing and shrink wrapping, and uh, they do a continuity test. So it's a very robust system we're very nice. happy with. And so it's on this 559 yes. folding, right? So it's not a problem with folding, yes? Yeah? It's not. We um, definitely have a little uh, quick um, release detachment of the wiring harness so you want to you know, take that off before you fold it. But other than that, it's no problem. Some people take the battery off, which makes it a little easier to fold, but it's really not necessary. All right, Mark, and um, I understand now you talked about the helping handles, but uh, there is more in the way of accessories I think you guys are into now. Should we take a look at that? Oh, sure. Like uh, our boss system, when we first released, we didn't have a light system with them. Um, and now we offer an add-on upgrade to the all Bosch systems that we sold out there. It's a supernova light that's really very cool, and it comes standard on all of our e-kits now and e-cats. Okay, and uh, you were telling me something about the way the rear uh, light uh, can what build in intensity when uh, you're slowing down. What was that about? Yeah, so it's really cool technology. So instead of having all these wiring technology hooked up to your brake handles, this thing activates when you decelerate. So as your trike slows down, the brake light starts working. It's a really cool feature. Sounds great. Mark, one last thing. I wanted to uh, thank you and Cat Trike so much for your continuing support over the years and specifically for supporting us here at CycleCon 23 this year. It's always very much appreciated. That's great, Gary. Thank you very much. You guys do such important work for the whole industry. You've helped our brand grow for sure, and it's always good to see you guys and all the new things you're up to. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Guys, here at the Laidback Bike Report booth at CycleCon 23, we have some good friends of mine from Iowa. Connecticut Yankee Peddler is the name of the shop. And here with me is Dave and Josh and uh, young Titus, uh, all members of the crew of the, uh, of the shop. Titus actually runs things there. We'll talk to him in a minute. But Dave, um, as the former owner before Titus took over, um, <laughs> You made a decision to support the Laid Back Bike Report here at CycleCon as a sponsor, and I wanted to thank you, first of all, for that very much. You're welcome, Gary. We appreciate it. We, we think you do a good job, and look, I mean, I'm even wearing a Laid Back Bike Report uh, hat. Right, too, too tight, I understand, uh, so I hope that doesn't give you yeah, a headache. Uh, maybe I got it down too low, Gary. Uh, no. yeah, okay, okay. It looks, it looks great. So, All right, guys, so um, I guess if we can have just a quick update, what is the latest going on, uh, Josh? Maybe you can tell me at the shop. No, we're adding an electric assist, selling trikes, uh, doing servicing, all of the above. So, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Things are going well, yes. so... You folks may or may not know that uh, our pal John Hawkins, Inner, Inner Tuba, has uh, really, as of today, completed his journey up the Mississippi River on a nice trike and trailer playing his tuba. He's got a concert tonight, which is going to end it all, I guess. Right. Well, I don't want to say end it all. That sounds a little drastic. <laughs> it will finish his, uh, his journey up the Mississippi the River. Uh, that journey probably would also not have been possible without these guys. Uh, Dave, you've been a big part of, uh, of, of getting John on the road and keeping him there. So mm -hmm. tell us uh, about your impressions of that trip. Well, he's got about 3,000 miles in, and I was able to ride the last 28 with him um, up to the headwaters of the Mississippi. Um, a good ride on Highway 71 up there from Park Rapids to uh, Lake Itasca. And uh, anyway, it was good. I was able to be there for the concert at Lake Itasca, and uh, John does a good job, a good presentation. For sure. So congratulations from all of us to John, if uh, you are watching this. And uh, Connecticut Yankee Peddler, guys. Uh, support them if you're anywhere in the uh, Des Moines, Iowa area. 
and uh, they're good folks. So thanks a lot, guys. Great, thank, thank you. you. Guys, we're here at the cruise bike booth uh, with my pal Larry Osland. And Larry, uh, it's good to see you again, first Thanks, of all. Gary. Good to see you too. Pal, what are you doing here for cruise bike exactly? Well, I'm a dealer for them now. Um, I've been riding and racing cruise bikes for nine years. Uh, really good friends with Zimmer Maria. They gave me the opportunity to represent cruise bike here at, uh, at this convention. They've made me a full-fledged dealer. Um, I'm actually created a, a museum of all the cruise bikes that have ever been made. And we'll talk more about that later, but they decided uh, that it was time for me to go ahead and make me a dealer since I know so much about them. So yes, we will talk about the museum later. Um, we're gonna put you on the show. We'll take a good look at the museum. But I guess uh, let's talk back about the dealership again. Maybe folks need to know where you are if they wanna come and see you and, and test ride a okay. cruise bike. Where are you? Physically, I'm at uh, in Hilton Head Island. If you go on the cruise bike website and go to dealers and search down for a museum, you'll find me there. And anybody's allowed to come down there, I can help help you pick the bike of your dreams. Right. And nobody that I know knows more about cruise bikes and racing on cruise bikes than this guy right oh, here. So, thanks, Gary. of course. All right, Larry, let's uh, let's focus down in on uh, maybe the latest uh, that you could talk about with cruise bikes. What is this amazing machine right here? This right here is called the V20C, and for anybody that knows even a little bit about cruise bikes, the original racing cruise bike was called a Vendetta. Um, later it was called, shortened to a V20 because the seat angle is 20 degrees. The C now stands for carbon fiber. They've went ahead and made the whole front end carbon, reduces the overall weight of the bike by about a pound. So, of course, it's faster, it's nimbler, it's tighter. Everybody that rides this new one just <clears throat> can't believe how much how much nicer it is even than the old one and the old one let me tell you it was nice anyway mm -hmm. yeah it's a speed demon this one is just it's just a pleasure to ride so that's great the the, the vendetta 320c and you have a few other models here what uh, do you want to just basically tell us what you brought here for folks to test ride sure we've got the uh, s40 over here the red one we also have a Q45 and then we have a T50 right now. It's actually out on the test track, but we're letting anybody ride any bike they want as long as they can prove they won't fall down on it. <laughs> I don't know how they prove that, but know. we haven't seen much of it. No, nope. so, so we've uh, we've test driven probably 20 times already today. So it's just been a great time. The expo's great. Thank you for coming, Gary, and, and supporting the whole uh, laid back community. Well, you didn't let me thank you first, Larry, yeah. of course, that's the guy you are. Thank you so much. I'm glad I didn't knock the vendetta over. So appreciate <laughs> All right, it. Larry. Thanks, Gary. Uh -huh. Appreciate it. We're at the EBO booth with our pal Jason. How you doing, pal? Great. How are you? Good. So we're back to uh, see what is new. So I guess nothing new too much with the hub motors, but you have something really interesting to show us on uh, an accessory to it. What's going on? So right here, what we have is a pedal assist system that we've moved into the idler. So now we instead of a PAS, we have an IPAS. And this was asked for us to do by, I think, every bike shop that we deal with. And with the help of T-Cycle, um, I asked them last year at the show, I said, we have to have this for every single trike. So we started out with Cat Trike and Terra Trike, and they helped me make this thing, and it's been fantastic. Let's, uh, Jason, let's explain for folks who maybe don't really understand what's going on. So, torque sensor, this is unusual. Why? Where would you usually find a torque sensor in a motor system? So, this, this guy's a uh, speed based cadence sensor. So, basically, you usually put it up here in the crank. And the problem with that is you're always having to adjust, move, modify, change this in the crank to make it work. Uh, and all this does is replace the idler, and you don't have to mess with the drivetrain at all. So, basically, as it spins, it reads the magnets, the sensor sends the information to the controller, which tells the motor to spin. So this solves all of our issues with bike shops having to deal with the crank. So all your motors now, they're coming with this part in the system automatically? Yes. That sounds great. Okay, really interesting. So thanks for sharing the info. Thank you. Okay. Back at the laid back bike report booth here at the end of CycleCon 2023, and we need to take this opportunity, Trey, to thank a couple of our friends who have sponsored us, but unfortunately, we're not able to be here. Yes. Those guys are? Falco Motors. That's pretty close. E-Motors, you got to say E-Motors. All right, E-Motors. And those guys are? Falco E-Motors. And? 
I don't know the other one. Darn it. Uh, and and Andrew at uh, Trailside Trike. Trailside Trike. Right, right. So Trailside. Oh, trailside. Not. Just Trailside Trikes. I know it's usually not on this side of the thing. All right. So I want to take this opportunity to thank two of our sponsors who made this all possible, but we're not able to be here uh, this year. And those are, let's see, start with Andrew at? Trailside Bikes. <laughs> and it did used to be that. I know. That's why I keep, because when right. you stare at your computer you screen. You write it out with two cards? No. Can you? How much, how much memory on the stick left? Never mind. We'll do this. Right. So we want to thank those amazing sponsors who helped make this all possible, but we're not able to be here at CycleCon. Starting out with Rakesh at? Falco E-Motors. Absolutely. And our good buddy Andrew at? Trailside Trikes. Absolutely. So guys, thank you so much for helping the Laidback Bike Report be here at CycleCon to do this amazing coverage. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right, guys, we are here with my pal Justin from Greenspeed. How you doing, Justin? Fantastic, fantastic. Good to be here. I've been watching your content for a few years now, being relatively new to the uh, to the industry. You guys have enlightened me quite quite a bit over the years. So well, that's great. Keep kicking it out. Thank you. Yeah, that's, we try to do that. Right, so, right. All right, well, Justin, you're going to talk about some Greenspeed products, uh, maybe some accessories. But we're going to start here with uh, with the Magnum, this specific Magnum. What's special about it? Yeah, so this is the, the Magnum Big Wheel. It's been around for a bit, tried and true, beautiful design with a few additions that we've had uh, in the last year. The first of which is uh, the Bosch Boost Kit. So going electric is something that we have been wanting to do and have been in the works for years. Um, and now it's finally come to market and it's been very well received. So a, a, a P65, 65 newton meters of torque, performance line motor uh, from Bosch. You know, also comes with the Kiox display, which offers all kinds of metrics for average speed, distance traveled, and, and all of the uh, power assist options that Bosch brings to the table. You know, depending on the type of terrain you're riding, you know, whether the wind's at your back or the wind's at your front, whether you're going up hills, going down hills, up to somewhere in the world of 80 miles, uh, 80 miles on a battery, battery yeah. charge. And that 400 watts is gonna pretty much take care of anything you encounter. Yeah, a lot of people are familiar with Bosch, very seamless torque sensored system. So sometimes uh, on like eco mode, you don't even really know it's giving you the, the assistance, but you can kick it in when you need it. You can kick it off if you don't. So yeah, I love riding it. I spend a lot of time on uh, gravel pathways in uh, in Michigan, so we start on a on a paved path, and we can veer off to uh, some gravel or some crushed limestone in the Magnum Big Wheel. I'm a fan of the rear wheel being a little bigger, kind of smooths out some of the bumps, and it's good to go. Love it. So good. One other addition to this particular model is the introduction of the ATC Bio Grips, which have a built-in ridge rest, keeps you extremely comfortable when you're. You get the trike set up, you're in the trike, and you just want a relaxed upper body, your hands, grab the, the handlebars, green speed steer very easily, but then the addition to be able to just rest your wrist on the integrated grip is a huge advantage. I found them super beneficial. So, from the large trike to something a little smaller, the GT20, what do we got going on here? Actually, yeah, exactly. The, the GT20 is the the leaner, meaner machine that we have offering from Greenspeed. Um, new to this model, this, well, middle of next year we're expecting is the addition of a rear hub electric assist drive from Promovec. So we've got that installed on here to test this weekend. Anybody can come out and test drive it and see how it works. But yeah, unlike the mid-drive system here for the Bosch, we've decided to go with a rear hub drive system of um, from, from Promovec. And it's real clean setup. I mean, I like it. It's got a really streamlined design here for the functionality of your different uh, assist levels, where your battery's at, and then best of all, it will Bluetooth to your cell phone to give you all the other metrics that you know folks are looking for. Average speed, average distance, total speed, total distance. Uh, everything else has a mapping system on it. So yeah, super excited about that. Uh, it'll be an aftermarket product for anybody with a rectangular tube green speed g20 it's been around for a bit now nice so speaking yeah. of the mid-drive uh so uh, could you put instead of the hub you could put a boost kit on this 
We don't have an approved boost kit mid-drive from Bosch designed for the GT20. Keeping in line with the lightweight design uh, and the, the nimbleness and the steering accuracy of a, of a GT20, we've opted to go with a rear hub drive. Um, nice clean setup. Still has the power that some folks are looking for to get you up the hills or take you a little further, take you a little longer. Um, turn yeah. it off if you don't want it. No, no, that makes, it, yeah. yeah, that makes great sense, John, because I was just wondering, you know, why the hub kit, but that makes sense. It's yeah. just, it's the perfect yeah. solution for this trike. We exhaust all the, all the, all the possibilities yeah. at Green Speed. We have a fantastic team of engineers and support. We put a lot of effort into, you know, if we're going to make a change to something, what is it going to do to it? And the mid-drive motor for us wasn't, wasn't quite what we were looking for from the steering that Green Speed is known for nimbleness, agility, so, and then keeping in a lower weight, we took it to the GT20 rear hub drive motor. So Justin, we also have a, a set of tires here, accessories now we're gonna be talking about from Green Speed. These are very special tires, a lot of folks love them. What do we got? Yeah, this is the, uh, the Scorcher from Green Speed. Um, attributes to this, very lightweight, very supple, extremely low rolling resistance. So uh, historically very popular with the HPV racing scene. They love it for the, the speed that this uh, tire can provide, the low rolling resistance, and just the way that it glides down the bike path. There's two sizes with two different width options. So we have the 20 inch in 1.5 here. We also have the 20 inch in 2.25. And then we have the 16 inch in 1.5. We also have two different thread pitches, 60 and 120. 120 is just gonna get you a little bit lighter, a little bit more supple tire. That's what the race scene usually goes after. Um, but these come stock on many of our models. It's a great, it's a great tire just to you know, increase your glide down the road, reduce your rolling resistance. The Magnums have a little wider profile than the GTs. So if you wanted to add some efficiency and some speed to your, to your Magnum, Scorcher's the way to go. So Justin, uh, then that's gonna wrap it up here at the Green Speed booth. I wanna thank you very much for showing us around what you have. Mm -hmm. And of course, again, thank you for sponsoring us uh, to our track yeah. Green Speed, always great uh, supporters of the Laid Back Bike Report. Absolutely, it's, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on board. Uh, as again, I appreciate all the content you guys put out over the years. Uh, it's fantastic stuff. All right, hats yeah. off, buddy. Hats off, yeah. Here we are at the HP booth here at CycleCon 23 with my pal, Matthew. How are you? Hi, Gary. I'm fine. Uh, what about you? Oh, I can't complain. We're having a great time here. Lots of amazing things to see. And here at HP Velotechnic, you've got something new that we've talked about on the show a little bit. What, what do we have in front of us here? So we have something very new. For the first time, we are bringing a trike with two wheels in the back and one in the front. So it's the first HP Velotechnic Delta trike. We call it the Delta TX. So we are super proud and happy to be able to show this here at CycleCon 2023. And everyone's super excited about this one. And it's been out on the track a lot. People love it so far uh, because of uh, what it does, and uh, I'm gonna to explain to you guys a bit what it does. I was just gonna ask you, tell us about some of the features. So this Delta only comes with e-assist. We offer a wide range of motors. So we fit the mid-drives right there. We have the Shimano motor, the same one that we have on our Scorpions, for example. Mm -hmm. A lot of torque with the cargo edition. Um, we also offer it uh, with a Bafang. So that would be the entry-level one but it's just enough uh, to get around. Um, we have the same seat as always, mm -hmm. the premium one, super comfortable, very easy to adjust. You just slide it back and forward. Um, so it's the same adjustments as always. Um, so that makes it really comfortable. Let's talk a little bit about how you can carry some cargo here. What's this? Well, you can carry a lot of cargo. We wanted people to be able to go grocery shopping mm -hmm. without worrying uh, where to fit all the stuff. So you can get a lot in there. It was important for us um, that you could put a, a crate. So it's uh, super practical and uh, it's definitely something you should order with your Delta TX. And uh, that makes a lot of sense. 
Yeah. Other great thing about the Delta TX that I have to mention here sure. is that it's splittable for transport. Um, you can take it apart into minimum three pieces, take the seat off so that you can fit it in your car or whatever transport you have um, so that you can uh, bring it to the bike trail and have a good time there. Um, because it's a it's a long uh, trike for it, sure, so you can break it down and then easily put it back together exactly. at the trail. Yeah, that just takes a few minutes, and we uh, we made a video that to explain to the people how how it works. It's the easiest entry in its class, so no more back pain or anything. You just step your leg over and uh, sit in there, so it's super comfortable, easy to get in and out. Um, yeah. Chopper style, uh, so a lot of things going on with this with this Delta. That's great. It's a great new uh, item for you guys to get into. I was wondering about availability. So uh, I think we talked about this before. Uh, early next year, is that correct? Exactly. We want to start um, shipping them uh, next year as soon as we can. So this is our prototype. That's what it's going to look like. Uh, it's going to come in two colors, uh, gray and this uh, fantastic new metallic blue uh, very popular uh, and uh, so far everyone's been interested in it so we're super happy uh, to be here with that trike sounds great and so we'll look forward to that they, they, uh, the folks will be able to uh, purchase this then next year at their HP dealers around the yeah. world right so dealers are already ordering right now um, so that's a very good sign everyone wants to get their hands on it and show that in the shop because uh, we feel like a lot of people are going to want to test drive this here and also at their dealers next year. And a little inside information for you folks. Uh, turns out that uh, our own Trey Burgoyne is going to be taking this back to Mississippi with him and he will be doing a full review on the, the Delta TX for HP and uh, we'll have that for you in a few months. So hopefully before it's available, you have a nice review of, the, uh, of this wonderful trike. That'll conclude our, uh, our look at the, uh, the Delta here from HP, but I wanted to take a minute to thank HP and uh, Matthew, thank you so much for supporting the Laidback Bike Report here. You have become a sponsor and you guys have supported us so much in the past, so we really appreciate that, thanks. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you. Thank ya. you very much. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we are uh, outside of the actual venue here at CycleCon 2023 with a good friend of mine, Paul Hollins, uh, who likes to call himself the uh, the uh, H in HP. Is that correct, Paul? That's correct, Paul Hollins. Hollins and Pulvermüller Velotechnik. That's what we called ourselves 30 years ago. Paul, I wanted just to take a few minutes with you to. Uh, Give us an update on what's going on at HP uh, these days. There have been some, uh, some new products and, uh, and maybe some things I don't even know about. So can we start there? What's new at HP these days? Yeah, uh, first of all, I'd like to mention that we are having a great time here at CycleCon. It's a fantastic venue and there's an overwhelming amount of people coming here. So it's really great day and great fun to meet all the people who like the ride. Uh, we've got some new stuff and we brought some proven stuff just like the gecko I'm sitting right on today and showing this to your viewers and this is the actual main prize in the raffle that's taking place on CycleCon. So visitors to CycleCon do have the chance to win exactly this I must say really comfy trike I'm sitting on lightweight and foldable so that's one good thing. Uh, not only uh, talking the talk you are I don't know it's not walking the walk but you are as comfortable as could be. That's true. Uh, it's not only you can put your feet up in the air, you can still move and go where you want and explore, so that's part of the fun. But as you mentioned, the, the Gecko is not the only trike that we brought here. Uh, me and my team, Matthew and Robert, we came all the way from Frankfurt in Germany and flew in uh, here to CycleCon. We brought some of our trikes, not all of them. We have more than 16 different models in the range, so uh, we picked some of them. And the main trike, that's the main point of interest for the people who come to the HP Velotech booth, is our new Delta TX trike. And that's a new thing for HP Velotechnic, some people might think. Uh, it's not so new for the industry. Uh, you've mentioned it on your show before, and Heiko has told you some details, but 
it's a great day for people to actually see the trike, sit on it and ride and see how it feels. I don't want to interrupt you, but right about now, if folks are looking, the, we did not set this up. You might see a Delta TX <laughs> blue one go right by us. I think you saw that, folks. Sorry, go ahead. Well, that's all. It's all about perfect timing. And here <laughs> it, it is. It? Yeah, we think it's a perfect timing for us as well for this year to expand our range with the Delta TX trike. Because Tetpole trikes have their great appearance and a great place in triking world. They're very sporty trikes and they get a full fun and speed and joy of riding. And we want to expand that in the HP Velotechnic style and build quality and engineering to the Delta TX trike world. And we're very happy people uh, are having a good day and a good ride on it. Anything else you can share with us in terms of uh, new ideas, thoughts about what may be coming up uh, for us uh, from HP? Yeah, there's great things going on in the electric assist region and uh, as we see here in the US and in Europe for sure, electric assist is the new thing and the move, new movement in the trike and recumbent industry. With electric assist, the riders can expand their range so much and we do attract so many new prospects and new people. Uh, not only people that do have some medical issues or think they're not able to ride a bike, but also uh, long-standing riders that now can explore completely different areas. So HP Velotechnic uh, has a long tradition of making electric assist for many, many years. Uh, we're cooperating currently with Neo Drives, that's a German company, and we're very happy and proud that they made the way to CycleCon. And that's a good new information for your viewers as well. The Neo Drives company now has their own two service reps, uh, which both are well known in the recumbent industry and good support here. So that's a good thing. It's a good hub motor, very powerful, very efficient. Uh, we're also doing the Shimano range of motors. We have three different systems. And new for this year, new for the riders here at CycleCon is the Shimano 801 system. That's their top line system. HP Velotechnic choose to use the cargo edition on that. So you might want to use white cargo edition mm -hmm. on a recumbent trike, but we think the, um, the requirements for electric assist are pretty similar. With a cargo bike or trike or a recumbent trike, you want to have all the power that the motor has right on the beginning to get things moving. And that's why we're using the cargo edition. And also, it's a great system that offers the opportunity to put automatic gear shifting on the trike. And that's one thing that the people who are just riding here on the test tracks are really uh, really uh, having a good time with when we say, don't worry about gear shifting, it's got automatic shifting. People are not that much used to it, but after a minute or two, they find it very exciting that the trike just chooses the perfect gear for you. So that's new at HP Velotechnic, and we think that's a major development for the recumbent industry. Yeah, it makes it so easy to just get out and enjoy the ride. I think uh, that's that's a great development there as well. All right, well, then with that, Paul, I'm going to say uh, thank you so much for sitting down comfortably with me on these wonderful trikes and spending a little time telling us what's going on at HP. Always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate your support. It's a great show. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Into the basket. Of Nothing our new up is Delta T strike, by the way. We're not only doing temple trikes, we're now doing Delta T strikes. We brought this track specifically because of this nice shopping basket. Within a minute, we'll pick the right car. Like you will be lucky to have this Gecko trike. The Gecko trike is our most lightweight trike, so we make it easy for you to take out. If you've got a small car, you can fold down the seat, so no reasons why not to take this out. We just do the best thing sit on it and cycle back wherever you live here. <laughs> I'm gonna close my eyes, try not to fall over, and find that one car that you or you mentioned. What could it be? Is it is? No, this one feels good. Oh, that's mine. I'm gonna put on the first I have this car, it's folded, and open up my eyes, and we will officially announce that Mr. Tim Kelly. Whoa! It's Tim Kelly here. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Tim. Come on, Tim. He worked hard for it. <laughs> One of the best decisions of this year to come to CycleCon in 2023. Please have a seat on your Gecko 26 from HP Velotechnic. Now, Mark and his team at Sankofan, how do you feel? Stunned. 
<laughs> okay, so where do you plan to enter the rattle? So what's your plan to arrive in this trial? All over Pittsburgh and everywhere else I get to. Well, from the HP Middle Tank team and from the Cyber Pro team, best luck, have a good ride. Good to see you. Thank you very much. All right, guys, we are here with my pal Drew from Ice Strikes uh, over in England. How are you today, Drew? Wow, yeah, we're, we're really good. Really excited to be here. Definitely excited to be talking to you guys and, and all your viewers. And, uh, yeah. CycleCon is going to be smashing this year. It is. We're just getting started. So uh, Drew's going to give us an update on the latest at ICE. A lot of changes uh, have occurred in the last year or so. So Drew, uh, I'm going to hand it over to you and tell us what has been going on. So I, I suspect the biggest thing that, that the viewers want to know and the, and the recumbent community is that last year, the Neil and Chris, our founders, they sold the business but they sold it to us as the employees. 24 years of amazing dedication and hard work, um, but as anything, you know, they want to ride trikes. Um, so Neil is, is almost as good as retired, he's still on our board, riding trikes and enjoying it. Chris, on a day-to-day -day basis, is still very much involved, which is amazing. Mm. And he's working on continuous development and, uh, and, and, and just really, looking at how ice strikes can be better every day at what they do. Excellent. Now you mentioned something about uh, 24 years and 25 years. What's this about? Well, so at the 24 year point, uh, Neil and Chris handed the business over to the employees uh, who are obviously we are so invested and dedicated in it to run us into our 25th year. Um, so we are this November 25 years old. Um, apparently you can legally drink in the States when you get to 25 in some states. Yes, even a little bit before, but yeah, yeah. Uh, with you guys for sure. Yeah, so we're legal now in for, to have a beer in some bars. Sounds good. All right, let's talk about some of the uh, emphasis that ICE has uh, put forward for their business in the past and maybe if, if there's a transition or a change now. Uh, I know adaptive triking has been a, a large part in the past, and I think maybe even a bigger emphasis now. Where are you guys going with that? Yeah, I mean, adaptive and accessible cycling is, is a big passion of mine. I'm, I'm ex-military, and obviously I deal with an enormous amount of veterans who have sustained injury during service or post-service. And we really want to encourage cycling uptake both from a physical and a mental welfare perspective because it helps with uh, overcome their physical and neurological challenges that they may be living with on a daily basis mm -hmm. but the, the, the bigger picture to that is making it more adaptive for anybody who has a need and requires a safe fun exciting and a community-based sport such as recumbent cycling Right, so uh, with that in mind, you guys promote a lot of events and that sort of thing. How do you actually uh, pursue that idea? Okay, well, so just recently, I was with one of our dealers in the UK. That's Paul from Adaptee. He's on the backdrop here in the green. Um, we took uh, 14 occupational therapists out who deal with uh, stroke survivors and basically educated them into the... the the benefits of recumbent cycling and it was great that some of their some of their clients turned up with their own trikes not necessarily always an ice trike but certainly a recumbent tab pole trike and it's amazing that you can take somebody who can sometimes barely walk put them in a trike and they're off they're they're riding as well as the next person we call it level in the playing field so we are looking at ways in which we can invest our time invest product development into enhancing that experience and mm -hmm. making it just just better all round for, for them. Um, but at the same time, not forgetting our able-bodied clients as well. Um, and the great news is, you know, a recumbent tricycle is adaptive by design rather than intention. Right, as a platform, it's the perfect start. Yeah. Isn't it? Stable and safe and, you know, where you're a rider of a recumbent 
tricycle. I mean, they are so much fun to ride. Drew, you mentioned strokes, and yeah. uh, I don't think we can continue this conversation without mentioning, a, 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 I guess, a new collaboration with a gentleman that is a, a, a friend of both of ours yes, yes. here in the States, Dan Zimmerman, who is with uh, Strokes Fighting, Spokes Fighting Strokes. Yeah, so uh, tell me a little bit about that. Well, Dan is, he, honestly, he's, he's, I feel very, very humble in Dan's Dan's presence. He is. He had a huge stroke. It changed his life, and he has pedalled his way not out of of the situation, but it, 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 it's just amazing. And we had the opportunity to sponsor him with two of our trikes. So, which is great because within his fleet, he's running Terra trikes, he's running Cat trike, he's running Haza, he's running Ice trikes. And it's amazing that all these manufacturers that are in competition mm -hmm. are able to put that element aside, collaborate on a package to provide Dan with enough product so he can maintain the deliverance of the message that cycling helps rehabilitation. And obviously he doesn't just deal with stroke survivors on his tours and his clinics, he's dealing with varying different sorts of handicaps and disabilities with the the intention of opening people's eyes really to what is achievable and honestly he, he's an amazing guy and it's a, a real real pleasure to to, to be able to work with him on that as well. I couldn't agree more. All right, let's uh, circle back now to the 25 years. Uh, you are doing a little something special with uh, with a trike yeah. uh, commemorating that, uh, and it's in front of us here. Tell us what you got. So we needed to mark the, the occasion. 25 is, is a, it's a, it's a milestone for any business, you know, um, and, and especially one, you know, ice trikes. So we, Adrian Davis, who's our new managing director, um, commissioned the design department to come up with something a little bit different, a little bit special, and a colorway that we could run for the duration of our 25th year. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see in front of us, um, the stripes represent the, the colors of the trikes that we currently build. The white is the, the sort of clean and pure and, and thinking of us and this particular colorway is available on everything except the VTX. Okay, okay, sounds good. Drew, then uh, finally I want to uh, make sure to thank uh, you and Ice Trikes and all the employees who are now owners yeah, yeah, yeah. for uh, continuing your support and sponsorship of Laidback Bike Report uh, here at CycleCon yeah. and of course for the many years of support you've given us. It's, it's been um, a pleasure for me to uh, meet all you guys and visit uh, the factory and uh, I consider you all very close friends. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure Gary and thank you to you and your team for, for everything that you do in, in, and, and your viewers of course for, for taking the time to watch the videos. It's amazing. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks pal. Cheers. Okay. All right. We're here back at the Layback Bike Report booth. And we're talking to one of our amazing sponsors here at CycleCon 23, Matt from Jersey Benz. Matt, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you very much. It's uh, always an honor to be a sponsor. We love Laidback Bike Report and want to keep our name out there as well. So, Thank you. That's very nice of you. So uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what's going on at Jersey Benz these days. What's happening? Sure. Um, so as far as like new things, kind of clean the floor out, try to get new models in as, as best we could for all the brands that we carry, which we have over 10 brands, so we have a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. Um, don't really know about much new, really, you know, other than just trying to have people coming in and, and, and keep people riding, keep people, happy people on seats. Matt, you were here yesterday at Dealer Day, and uh, I'm just wondering, like, how you found it? Were you able to ride a lot of things and see some new things here? Uh, yeah, yeah, Dealer Day was fun because there's less commotion going on, so you can actually see each dealer, talk to the people who you want to talk to, and stuff like that. So I was able to write quite a few things, actually. It was a lot of fun. Great. All right. Well, then we'll wrap it up, leave it there, and uh, just thanks once again, Matt, for sponsoring us here at CycleCon. Of course. Thank All you right, very much. Was... Okay. Guys, back in the Laidback Bike Report booth uh, with my good pal Mickey from Laidback Cycles. Yeah. Mickey, what is up? Well, you know, I'm here at Recumbent Cycle Convention having a good time. 
And yeah, getting to see all the cool vendors and manufacturers out there making some neat stuff. Neat stuff, yeah. which you're looking over to see whether it fits in your shop, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, we carry some amazing vendors and we carry Cat Trike, Terra Trike, Green Speed Ice. And uh, I wanted to see what the new things were. And I came out and I saw some cool stuff like Ice has a new graphics. Did you check that out? We did, yeah. Yeah, it's like 70s graphics. And they said 70s and also they said the Tour de France. So if anybody wants to go a little faster on their trike, the paint job really matters. It makes a difference. I think so. And you got to choose wisely when it comes yeah, to that for sure. Yeah, you got to look good. All right, so good. you've got all those nice brands, uh, Libat Cycles. Anything else new going on there? What's uh, what's the well, emphasis these days? Well, we just uh, we moved into a new building, so we bought a building. We actually bought it, so I'm not having to pay rent all the time, and so which is really nice. Uh, but the building is twice as big now. So we put our warehouse there. We put our new larger service center there. And we just got more trikes there. So I'm looking to see what else I can bring from the show today back home and just to share some more awesome trikes. Sounds really good. Uh, Northern California? NorCal, yes, there's SoCal, NorCal. NorCal is where we actually get rain. SoCal is 75 degrees all the time. It's just, my son lives there, it's beautiful. But yeah, we actually get rain, flooding, and uh, different weather. Okay, yeah, all right. Not all Californians are tan. Like, I don't know, if, am I tan? Do I look more Californian nowadays? Yeah, you know, a little skinnier? Well, yeah, you know, Mickey's looking good. He's been working out. He's been yeah. uh, riding a lot. I'm riding so. my trikes. I rode the other day on the American River bike trail. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's sunny and beautiful, 85 degrees. A perfect example of how you can gain health benefits from what, riding a trike? Yeah, yeah, no. If you use the trike, you actually get the health benefits. You do need to ride. Yeah, yeah you need need to ride because over a few years, I was eating more than I was riding, and I figured that wasn't working for me for long term. So I went ahead and I said, you know what? I think I'll ride more, eat less, and trim down, and it worked out. Well, good job, buddy. So, And also good job uh, thinking about us, as you have for so many years, helping to support the Laid Back Bike Report. Yeah, we are so guys. appreciative, Mickey. So uh, once again, thanks from us. Oh, well, no. Thank, thank, I want to thank you, Gary. Sometimes I can't speak very well. You, you see me on That's camera. not often, just to <laughs> let you guys know. But no, I want to thank you guys for doing a great job getting out there, just sharing the passion of cycling, the passion of recumbent trikes. And uh, you, get, you, get, yeah, you get a lot of people into the sport because they learn a lot of neat things. That is our aim. So, so. so neat. <laughs> neat. Neat. That's just the, the way you like your martinis. Oh, yes. When do we get those? I don't know. I think it's a dinner tonight. We'll no, find I out. I like everything neat. I like it straight up. <laughs> yeah, another mistake. I'm on oh, yeah. Thanks again, Mickey. <laughs> okay. Take care, pal. Thank you. Okay. Guys, here we are at the Lancaster Recumbent booth here at CycleCon with Scott. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's a great day. A lot of good customers and individuals in the shop. It is hopping today, Scott. All right. So you are representing a few interesting products at Lancaster's Re Lancaster Recumbents, and we're going to talk about those. Let's start here with this uh, cat trike. What do we okay. have on here? So what we've done is we've taken a cat trike and we've placed on this a radio frequency control braking system. So there are no wires, no cables running to the brake unit, and you have a clean upfront appearance. So simplistically, uh, one lever pull will actuate five levels of stop. The rear has a servo, radio frequency control, and applies the brakes to both wheels simultaneously. Wow. Okay. That's we can also click it and put it in park. One of the other features unique to this product is the fact that we have a remote control, and this remote control can be used up to 60 feet away. If the bike gets away from the mother and the child's out riding over 60 feet, it automatically stops the bike, or she can stop the bike at any time and put it in park. So even if you have an adult who's cognitively having mm. some issues, you have safety and control of that individual. That's an so. amazing safety feature. This is called Smart Brake, though, Smart right? Smart Brake, yes. Okay. And it's produced in Norway, and we're the importing distributor for the product. That's very interesting stuff. Yeah. Okay. Disc brakes or rim brakes are available, and we can control up to three wheels. We'll brake you. 
All right, Scott, so something quite different here, a very robust looking hand cycle. What do we have here? This is a Lasher hand cycle. It's produced in uh, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, the product is a mountain hand cycle, and there are three different styles. Uh, this particular one uh, has a thousand watt power assist on it, and as you can see, is very much uh, geared to climbing the foothills and the hills of uh, Nevada and other areas. We have six inch shocks on all three wheels, so we have nice clearance, a uh, robust frame made of magnesium, so it is uh, super tough and light and uh, capable of carrying cargo and individual. And it's just a great product to get out and defy gravity, if you will. And when you're riding the bike, you're actually can't, you're part of the bike, so you need to be able to steer and and lean into the curves so you uh, don't flip. Nice. So uh, it's it very robust and uh, fun to ride. So we do a lot of work with the adaptive community, veterans, et cetera, with this product. All right, I could see this could suit somebody perfectly. So if it's something that you guys might need, Lancaster recumbents Thanks. for this one. There All you right. go. So honestly, this has been one of the hits of the show from yesterday through this morning. I've seen everybody like with big smiles on their face, riding around like crazy. What, what am I sitting on? You are sitting on a Velo chair, uh, advertised as myvelochair.com. Uh, this is a carbon fiber wheelchair bicycle combination. Uh, the product is foldable. The boom will slide underneath. The front has an adjustable boom for legs of individual. The seat reclines in three positions, and it weighs less than 45 pounds. So it's very easy to move about and utilize in the community. So you can pedal forward or backward, steer with one arm, right or left, and it's very versatile. So you're in the dining room one minute at a retirement community, next minute you're out riding around campus. So. Uh, my velo chair is available in two styles. One is carbon fiber, the second is in titanium. Wow, oh, even a titanium yeah. version. All right, so, and tank steering, did you tell tank us? Tank steering, uh, so you can, it requires one arm, and if you need to look, get onto the bike, these fold down, so oh, you wow. have clearance to get on, and you choose the arm that you need to steer with. Um, and it's easy and fun to go. Okay, anything else to say about it, Scott? Well, being very versatile and utilized both internal and external, these are non-marring solid tires. So they aren't gonna leave stripes on the carpet, they're not gonna leave stripes on the dining room or in the hallway. So it's a good product to get out, get about, and utilize your legs, as over 90% of people in a wheelchair can actually move their legs. So, very versatile product. Yeah, great for their exercise and their future health. I love that. Absolutely. All right. Well, Scott, uh, one last thing. First of all, I want to take a minute to thank uh, you and Lancaster Recumbents for sponsoring the Laidback Bike Report here at CycleCon once again. We really appreciate your support. Thank you for your support. All right, pal. Thanks. You bet. Now all watch right. me get up. All right. We are here at the Master Pedal booth with uh, Joseph. How are you today? Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. We are happy to be here and talk to you about what we see on this table. So why don't you tell us the, maybe the background story of these uh, pedals and what brings you here? Okay, I have multiple sclerosis and I used to ride upright all the time with bikes and then I had a relapse and I couldn't do my mount regularly. My regular mount while was already challenged to get on a bike, I'd have to lay it down, step over the bike, clip in and pedal. Same with dismounting. But when I got a relapse, I couldn't get my bike around, my leg around the bike anymore. So I petitioned the VA for recumbent. Okay. Now, the lady who I was working with was very clever. She says, well, you got this challenge. Let's make sure if I'm going to prove your recumbent that you can still ride it. So I had, a, I had eight chances to pass the test. And fortunately, we have a bike shop up in Loveland in Fort Collins called Rocky Mountain Recumbent. And they had all the adaptive equipment, all the adaptive pedals. I got to test all the standard SPD pedals, the platforms, and all the all the, the handicap pedals or challenging pedals that they had. Mm -hmm. So they all failed. Didn't work for you. Didn't work. I couldn't keep my feet on the pedals. And an interesting thing I learned something interesting is that 
I rode years with SPDs, and what happened with the platforms when I was doing the recumbent, my heel, my left heel over-rotated the spindle mm. and it stretched the spasm in my calf and turned it into acute tremors and disconnected the, my foot from the bike. So I failed, and I, then I tried. So the night before, I said, I gotta figure out something, I'm gonna pass this test. So I came home, and I took an old Catalyst pedal, which is a mountain biker's pedal, mm -hmm. and stopped at Ace Hard, the Home Depot, and got a flat bungee cord, and laced it into the pedal, and I came back and I passed the test. Nice. So when I was driving out of the parking lot, it felt like this bike felt like as if it was propelled forward. Mm. Consequently, the name Propel is the name of my product. Okay. So I knew that that pedal is not, was not going to sustain. So I said I was going to have to get more engineering into it. So the VA, I said I'm going to need a few thousand dollars to get in. And the University of Colorado at Fort Collins, they have an engineering lab uh -huh. with students. So I petitioned them to help me do the model. Okay. So the first model, I, the VA helped contribute a few thousand, a thousand. The Marine Corps League, a Marine, they contributed a thousand. They paid to get the money through CSU. Okay. With my, I had to put in a couple more myself. But, of course. Yeah. And, but we got the first pedals, but they were all polymer, 3D printed, and they failed all miserably. They failed in terms of structure, like they didn't hold up. Right. Okay. But we got some of the basic notions down. Mm -hmm. And the early design was actually reminiscent of the early steel roller skates. Yeah. Oh. Where we had the jaws that held the. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but the thing is, the interesting thing about those, if you turn them on end, you get my product. Ah, right. Essentially. Okay. So, Avid PD from Loveland stayed as my engineering arm. Now I was an engineer already and do all the CAD stuff, so, but I didn't know how to handle the material part of the engineering. Mm -hmm. They were able to help you with that and get it together. To exactly. This so, product. so, what we see here is about the third generation, or this is actually the fourth or fifth generation from the CSU pedals. Tell us basically so, how does this work and why is it so, so effective? So to get our full power into the pedal, we have to have a device that does that. Mm -hmm. And everybody's foot is different. And if we have a cup that holds the heel, we have to be able to adjust the heel so this, so it's centric, the arch of the foot is centric over the pedal. Okay. So with the pedal, we have two bolts that allows us to slide the, the cup back and forth. And the cup design itself has, has, has got brakes on it. So on the power stroke, oh, excuse me, and then the other part, because we have yaw and mm -hmm. a pitch, we want to keep our foot from moving all over the foot. If you're doing four foot pedaling, your heel yaws. So in centric pedaling, we can put everything together. Okay. So we call this centric when it's over here and centered when your foot is over the pedal. So that way you get maximum power. So, Which is where you began. That's what you really wanted to get out of Right, this. getting the maximum power. Sure. For any of the folks out there who saw what you just showed us and they think this may be the solution for them, the Propel pedal, how do they find out more about it? How do they buy them? So actually delivering it, it's going to go through dealers. Okay. So yesterday was a dealer show, so people came by and I talked to them. So I'm not selling directly to the customers. The name of the pedal product is Master Pedal. The website is Master Pedal. Sounds good. Thank right. you. Thanks. Guys, uh, we're back at the TerraCycle booth with a good friend of ours, Jonathan Garcia. Jonathan, how are you doing? Good. I'm doing great. So, uh, Rose City Recumbents in Portland is where Jonathan is uh, usually hanging out, but he brought uh, one of these amazing mystiques with him, and we want to talk to him about that today. So, Jonathan, tell us a little bit about what you brought and what's going on with the Mystique. So, the Mystique, uh, this is our, we're going into our second, end of our second year that we've had them, but luckily this is the first time we've been able to bring it to a trade show. So, a lot of people, it's the first time they've been able to see it. Mm -hmm. They've been selling really well, but, you know, people need hands-on test rides, so we've been able to do that, which is exciting to hear the feedback 
from the different writers. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's talk basics first, if we can, and refresh for those of our viewers maybe don't know too much about the Mystique. Tell us the basics, uh, some of the features, how it's a little bit different than other uh, two-wheel recumbents. Sure. So the Mystique was designed for riders that are, I don't say racers, but ra uh, riders that want a very powerful platform, a very stable platform. So some of the things we did uh, is we incorporated new technology from, new technology to recumbents, but technology from upright bikes. Mm -hmm. So one example is the tapered head tube um, that allows us to run like a modern fork like this fork here. That hasn't happened in the recumbent industry as much. It's just starting to trickle in. The other thing it has through axles. So through axles make it a lot stiffer, um, especially in the back when you have a through axle, it can give that one piece feel to the back. So it also allows you to run like in the rear, you know, 10, 11, or 12 speed, which wasn't really, uh, the 11 and 12s weren't really available for other applications. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The, the next thing is I designed it so that it had a real firm ride up and down, so to speak, so the power gets to the ground, but it's smooth all around. Uh, one, one way we achieve that is having the rider's head, even if he lays back ahead of the rear axle. So all those little things add up to a very smooth ride. Also, I spent a lot of time on the front end here, just getting the front end uh, the minimum height we could do and still have clearance for even the big tires and heel clearance. Mm. So there was a lot of thought that was put into it. One of the things we really worked on is the overall height of it so that even a shorter rider, when it's moved forward, um, they're not, like on a stick bike, you're always higher if you're shorter. So this is to accommodate the shorter riders too. The clearance for the big tires, which is what we're bringing in from the influence of the gravel bikes and the upright world. And so I think that's a required thing now so you can run the newer modern tires. So think of a modern recumbent, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And one of the beautiful things about recumbents and recumbent riders is they're, they appreciate the older stuff, but it's time to move ahead. It's time to bring in the stuff that's existed for 10 or 15 or 20 years. Uh, it's it, like the 21st century now, yeah, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and apply that. Right. And um, I get accused sometimes of just liking the new stuff, and that's not even true. I have a huge collection of bikes, part of what I tested to make this bike. Well, I mean, there's, Jonathan, there's a, a reason, there's a purpose for the upgrades. It's, it gives you more options that you can use with today's components, really. Exactly I mean, basically, right. right? Yeah, exactly right. I mean, you have access to the to the nicer wheels, you have access to the nicer tires, you're not limited to 23 Cs, you know? And so it's accommodating just like, I mean, uh, John Schlitter's bike, the Freestyle, it's a C, it's like the concept of being able to put it together like you want is, is a positive thing. It gives, there's so many fewer two-wheel riders and it's, it's nice to modernize that so they feel like they're getting attention too. What if uh, I'm interested in uh, getting a closer look at the Mystique, maybe a, a test ride or just getting online and purchasing? Is that how it's done? Yeah, so um, you can go to Rose City Recumbents or our online site, which is newagebikes.com. In, in both those places, they're available. Generally, they come into the U.S. as a frame set, and then I build them up for people based on the gearing they want. Um, there's so many, I really pay attention to the region they're from. So we gear specifically for different customers. You know, um, if they're in Pennsylvania, I spoke to someone today and he needed just this really wide range. And now because of the compact cranks and all these cranks that are coming out, um, you can do that. You can get these huge gear spreads and that's what I try to accommodate. So, so especially like for touring and that type of thing, yeah? Touring, light touring, um, this frame, I would consider it the strongest of the high racers because it went three times the stand, the mountain bike standard in cycles on the on the stress test and still didn't break. So we know it went 350,000 cycles. So that's more than anyone, a lot of manufacturers don't test. So I can't say it's the strongest, but right. I can say it's pretty strong. Stands on its own. Yeah. Kind of All right. Great. So uh, yeah, the website and uh, Rose City recumbent system. Yeah, and we can sell a frame set to you with consultation, of course, to get the right parts, or we can, uh, I can build it up to you and I ship it to you, which is really the way it usually happens. Uh, you need the consultation, and I can't think of a better guy to have a consultation about anything recumbent than this guy right here, Jonathan Appreciate Garcia. Thank you thank so you. much. It's Appreciate great talking it. to you and great seeing you. Yeah, thank you. All right.
Guys, we're in the Neo Drives booth here at CycleCon uh, with Eve. How are you? Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. All right. So Neo Drives is something new for us, but apparently you guys have been working and collaborating with a few recumbent manufacturers. So let's start there, Eve. Who have you been working with uh, to electrify? Yeah, well, we, we are working uh, with HP Velotechnic, and uh, also we are actually giving out converting kits for uh, cat strike and ice strikes. And of course, in Europe, we are uh, supplying lots of other uh, bicycle brands with our, our drive system. Okay, and of course, NeoDrive is from uh, Germany, so they're here and uh, supplying uh, a number of manufacturers, as we said. I guess, Eve, the first question I'd have for you is like, um, why is the Neo Drive uh, better than some of the uh, alternatives out there? What what makes it stand out? Well, I wouldn't say it's better. It's different. If you if you compare it with the Mid Drive, um, you always have well, what we don't have is noise. Um, you always have the same power coming up from the back wheel, so it's always 40 newton meters, which doesn't sound a lot. But if you have a Mid Drive, you have actually always the the gears and the chain behind the motor. So if you start going in the last gear or fifth gear or whatever, it uh, won't have a lot of power. With our motor, you always have the same 40 Newton meters. And uh, of course, uh, you live in a big country. If you want to go far, you're not going to go far with the mid drive because your chain is going to wear off very quick. So you don't have that uh, with the hub motor. Okay. And well, you can actually regenerate. That's, uh, that's also a very uh, important thing. Good. Yeah, no, that's and really good. It's not too important, but uh, we're gonna do. We are making this motor actually in Germany, so it's uh, it's all made in Germany. We do the the copper windings and stuff all there, so it's a uh, quite good quality to have this motor. All right, so um, get more direct drive because it's a hub motor. Yeah. Uh, less chain wear because it's a hub motor, and uh, Very silent. It's silent motors. That all sounds really good. So how about we take a closer look at the actual drive? Can you show, show us some details? Yeah, of course. All right, Eve, so we have a, a motor right in front of us here. Tell us about some of the details. Yeah, so actually there's not much uh, to it to tell because there's not much in. We have uh, the motor electronic in here. It's all very cleaned up, so there's uh, no wiring or something around it. So that's the copper around here. We have the magnets uh, on the hub outside. And uh, of course, we got the torque sensor inside, uh, which is yeah making a nice, smooth riding feeling. There's one more very cool thing about yeah, it. Let's do it. If uh, if you actually undo the, the the back wheel to change your tire or whatever, it's quite easy. You just have this uh, have to undo the the actual, just pull it out like every normal bicycle, uh, undo this plug, which is really easy for everyone, and so. There's no, don't be afraid to change a tire with a hub motor. So it's very easy here. Right, so you don't have to work around the wiring or anything. It pops yeah, right just out and you're good. Plug it in, that's it. Yeah. So Eve, thank you so much for spending a little time with the Laidback Bike Report, yeah. telling us about the Neo Drive. It's really interesting to learn about it. Thank you. Thanks. All right, pal. We already said that the worst thing in the world would be interviewing you. That's why we put you last. All right. And here you are. So, all right. All right. Let's honestly, just, just do this. Let's swing this. So, all right. Let's do this stupid thing. I think. Are you are you good with the Zoom? We're in good shape. All right. Guys, I'm having a chance to like sit down and uh, relax a little bit with my buddy Mel uh, Berger here from Recumbent PDX. Mel, nice to see you here at CycleCon in my neck of the woods in Xenia. How you doing? Having the time of my life. No, he is not, I can promise you that. Anyways, it is good to see you here. Let's, uh, first of all, if we could, uh, start off by having me thank you very sincerely for, uh, for sponsoring us here at, uh, at CycleCon this year. Uh, always a great supporter of Plans what we do. Right no, I'm not doing Plans that. It right here. No, no, I'm planning anything. He's not that great. I'm, uh, I'm planning a thought, and that's, uh, I'm never doing anything like that. So, Mel, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is the hardest thank you at ever. I, so, uh, what am I saying here? The bottom of your heart. From the bottom of my heart, I your, really... Your children thank me. No, they don't care. Your grandchildren so, thank me. They're very nice and they don't care either. So, Mel, thank you for for sponsoring us. You know, thank I you was, for sponsoring us. I was this, but I think I'm not going to now. There you go. There you go. So, thank you for uh, always supporting the Laid Back Bike Report in oh so many ways. So, Mel, all right, I guess we've done that part. Now, <laughs> let's take a minute. And we probably don't need any more than that because we had you on the show very recently talking about the shop, uh, Recumbent PDX in Portland. What's going on there? Anything interesting to talk about? Anything new uh, in the last few months? 
No. So let's move on then, folks, uh, to something else that hopefully is interesting. Mel, you have uh, engaged in an organization. Did you actually start this organization? Uh, the banner that you probably can't see above us uh, that, that set off alarms. That, that's your cue to, to pan upwards, right? There's no, no, panning. no, no. The only panning will be after this video goes oh, this live. Get panned. Right. All right. So, Mel, uh, you started an organization that I had did not. to. Dana did. You and Dana worked together to start this organization that represents uh, recumbent dealers around the country in yeah, various ways. Okay, we'll be serious. Yes. So, okay. let, yeah, just Princi so let's start there. Principally, it was Dana's work. Dana, uh, Dana Lieberman, who owns Bent Up Cycles, he started uh, our recumbent dealers group on Facebook. Uh, where we can exchange ideas and like a dealer needs a part and the part is eight weeks away in Europe then another dealer says I have it, ships it to him and we talk about stuff and we know that we can do it like have frank discussions among us. Uh, one of the things that we like to do here in um, at RCC is there's a dealer day that was yesterday and we've invited a bunch of, of dealers to come into our booth. We had a few. We Maybe next year we'll have better turnout, but we had a few people come and sit down, and what we asked them to do is to talk about the things that you can only get at your local dealer, where you can get, uh, and first off, you have a dealership where you can test ride, which in my opinion, and in the opinion of a lot of people, is the single most important thing that you need to do in order to pick the right trike, so that's number one. You also get the expertise of somebody who is in front of you, who is answering questions, evaluating you, who combines I can speak to our store where I don't have a medical degree, I have no background in healthcare, but I've been doing this in a decade and somebody walks in our store and I can pretty much expertly evaluate what their needs are, which is something that you can only get in a local store. S somebody who can look at you and evaluate you and know whether you need heel support pedals, whether you need assist arms, whether you need pe pendulum pedals, whether you need electric motor, whatever it is. And then once you've made a selection after doing your test fitting, after doing your test riding, um, you make your selection and you get uh, proper service after the sale, which is something that you can only get at your local bike store. So what we want to emphasize for dealers and for customers is that even if you're a few hours away, it is worth going to your local recumbent shop because that's where you're going to get the best service. And again, buying a trike, we like to say in our store, it is the single most expensive purchase you will ever make solely by the seat or your pants, and if your seat feels good, it's the right trike, there's no way, no way you can make that decision properly without test riding, and there's no way you can make that decision properly without going to your local or regional recumbent store in order to do that test riding. Was that a summary? I, I, you know, I was gonna ask you to summarize, but I think that's a great summary, Mel. A large portion of our business is people with strokes, ataxia, ALS, uh, MS, uh, fill in the blank of all the things that happen to us as we get older. Knee replacement, hip replacement, uh, back surgery, neck surgery, uh, balance issues. Those are all the things that you need to sit in front of somebody who's an expert, work with somebody who's an expert. And every single one of the shops that I know is they are filled with people who are absolute experts in what they do, which is helping to get you on the perfect track, the one that will make you happy. And? In the final analysis, Mel, aren't we all just trying to be happy? I'm only trying to make other people happy. I like making, if I can make Gary Solomon happy for a moment. That then, was it. That, that and was, the moment did, is gone, I I, I'm afraid, so. Mel, thank you so much, pal. It's always good to talk to you. I'm glad to see you here in my neck of the woods. Thank you for interviewing me. All right. And Trey behind the camera. Thank you, Trey. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the Stein trike booth with my pal Janet. How are you, Janet? Doing great, Gary. Good to be here again. It's great to see you and uh, back at CycleCon. So we're going to see what the latest is with the wild ones, the various alterations and uh, <laughs> upgrades that you have. So tell us about what you have here. We continue to evolve. The greatest thing about Stein trike is how receptive uh, Robert and Victor are back in Serbia with, we make suggestions and they say, oh, okay, we can make that happen. Take for, for example, the, uh, the racks that we have. Mm -hmm. I mentioned about a year ago to Robert that our clients, our customers were asking for a top shelf. We didn't have it for the low rider racks at that point. So within, oh, probably uh, six weeks or so, we had this nice, amazing top shelf here complete with the artwork, which you probably can't see out there. But anyway, it's, uh, they're just responsive. We tell them we want larger wheels. We have some clients that are looking for 
uh, taller, taller seats transfer from a wheelchair or just easier to get in and out. Thus came about the 2424, which is making its debut today. Ah. And so it's, a base, it's the same frame as all the other wild ones, the same four inch suspension. The difference being it's uh, 24 inch tires and easier to get in and out of. I uh, rode it last night for the first time and uh, just absolutely amazed with the handling, uh, smooth, buttery. It's a, this, is a, this is a winner. This is a great, great trike. Nice. Uh, on my right, your left, is the 2020, meaning 20 inch wheels all the way around, the fat tire, four inches wide. So when you combine these um, fat tires along with the four inches of suspension, you get an amazing cushy ride, just incredible. I ride in Arizona in the sandy washes mm -hmm. and it just floats over the sand. This model has a folding hinge, which is right here, mm -hmm. which allows you, it gives you an extra, what, two feet or so in case you need, need that amount of room. So that's um, a folding hinge on the boom, the whole, the boom folds correct. back over towards the seat. Yes, it takes about maybe 10 seconds and you've got the extra length that you need. All right. So, so uh, since last CycleCon, the new racks, the 2424, the 2020 fat folding, and those are the biggest changes. I hear rumor there's uh, uh, changes in the future for possibly a trike for, uh, that holds uh, have more weight. Um, nothing specific yet. Um, we're experimenting, well not experimenting, with uh, the, the um, they call it the one, Wild One Electric. Okay. Which will be here tomorrow. We're back here at the Stein Trike booth uh, for an update. We talked to Janet yesterday about the Wild One mentioned that there is an e-assisted version and guess what it has arrived right janet it's here. this is a new kid on the block i'm thoroughly, thoroughly thrilled to see this in here this one is factory electric you'll see the the display you'll see the uh, the motor up here that's built in wiring all hidden nice and clean and tidy and as you all know, that electric is a rage. This is one where you go to a garage sale and you bought something that's a little bit too heavy, where well, you just turn on your little motor and you can get whatever you want home, or groceries, or a headwind. This is the deal for you. You can pet, turn it off and pedal it if you want. This is the Ollie system, developed, used in uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. So we are proud as could be to, issue, to show this one uh, as our new uh, display. So the Ollie motor, we took a little look. Uh, it's the Ollie Sport, I think, and 90 Newton meters of torque. So it will get you up and over the bumps if you're going to do a little off-road riding like you see behind us here, right? And yeah, if you're just riding down the road as well. So nice looking, uh, nice looking setup. Now, is the uh, e-assisted version available now or about to be available? What's now. the Yeah, put your orders in now. It's ready to go. It is developed. And as everything else in the line, our products are improving, being innovated, and uh, yeah, they are ready to go. You choose your color, and we do, you can do any color you want. Just Sound, about any color you sounds want. Sounds good. All right, a perfect match up here, a pairing of uh, e-assist motor with the uh, four-inch traveled, uh, majorly suspended, a wild one. All right, guys, and so finally, I wanted to thank uh, Stein Trikes and Janet for sponsoring us here at CycleCon 23. We really appreciate the support, as you have in the past. Thanks, Janet. Uh, thank you so much, Gary. Okay. All right, audio's on. We're good. Yeah, I should real loud. Okay. All right, guys, so uh, we are here at the Sunseeker booth with Michael, and it's great to see you again, Michael. Good to see you too, Gary. Thanks. Great. All right, so tell us what uh, you brought here to CycleCon and uh, give us some of the highlights. Well, we've got a, a pretty good sampling of all of the uh, product that we uh, sell at Sunseeker. Um, our most popular products are uh, EcoTad and our FatTad and then electric versions of both of those as well. Uh, we also have a number of other uh, uh, different trikes to choose from that we brought to show. So, Michael, why don't we talk about the E-TADs uh, uh, first. About Tell us about your electric systems and how they integrate into your systems. Sure, absolutely. So, our E-EcoTad, uh, we basically use that product uh, with a 500-watt uh, um, Bafong motor system. Uh, it is both pedal assist and throttle on demand. Uh, has a range of around 26 miles on that product. It's very, very reliable. It's a great entry-level product. Uh, price point-wise, it's very affordable in the marketplace, coming in 
you know, well under the $4,000 mark. Um, so that's a, a great option. Our EFAD TAD um, uses a, a 500 watt motor system as well. Now this is only pedal assist. Uh, the throttle uh, is not an option on this particular product. Uh, so you do need to pedal this guy when you get out there. Um, but certainly with the nice wide tires on it, suspension front and rear, uh, two inches of travel in the rear, an inch of travel up front. It's a very, very comfortable off-road ride with plenty of power to get you up the hills. Yeah, so now how about the price ranges on the uh, non-e-assisted uh, trikes here? So actually on our EcoTad, uh, the EcoTad without the electric system on it, that actually retails under $1,500 uh, for a nice two-piece frame construction. It's not a three-piece construction, so it's nice and stable. Um, very, uh, very solid ride. Uh, will accommodate riders anywhere from uh, about five foot one to about six foot four pretty easily um, with a nice, reliable drivetrain under $1,500. $1,500, it's a great option for folks. And then off-road and our regular Fat Tad, again, same suspension as on the E uh, setup, just without the motor and rack on the back of it. And that particular uh, product is under $3,000 retail uh, for a very, very capable off-road machine. Very reasonable. We got a couple of bikes, a bike and a trike to talk about here, and mm -hmm. then they're uh, mounted on something. So let's let's start with the, uh, with the bike and the trike first. Sure, absolutely. This is our T3CX. Um, a uh, little bit more low slung, very, very confident. Uh 24-speed drivetrain. This is a brand new colorway for us, you know, being headquartered in Miami. We are known for some bright colors, that sort of thing. It's a beautiful Mediterranean blue T3CX. Um, very, very capable, competent bike for under $2,300. Very nice. Uh, yep, absolutely. And it's actually positioned on uh, a new rack product that we sell. We're also, you know, a parts distributor as well. Um, and we actually have a, a rack system here with a trike adapter. It allows you to carry uh, one two-wheel bike uh, as well as a trike on it. Um, this particular product will carry um, products with five inch wide tires and it is e-bike rated as well. So you could actually carry an e-bike and an e-trike with 170 pound capacity. It really, you know, packs a punch, carry a big load. So the rack is, uh, is made by Hollywood Racks. Uh, it's an HR 1500, it's an e-bike rack. And then the trike adapter uh, is an add-on to that HR 1500. And you can find that in most of your local bike shops uh, without much trouble. Uh, if they don't have one in stock, they can certainly order one from you uh, and they'll pick it up from us. That sounds really good. All right, and one last thing, uh, folks. I want to let you guys know that uh, Sunseeker is a sponsor of Laidback Bike Report here at uh, CycleCon uh, 23, and we really appreciate that again. So thank you very much, Michael. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. We're happy to do it. Sure. Folks, we are here at the TerraCycle booth. Wait a minute, Gary, I can't see his face. What? What do you mean you can't see it? There we go. There we Out are. Out of the way. What? Quentin, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Gary? It's great to see you. And uh, what the heck was this thing obstructing your face? So this thing that we had in front of my face is the Llama system. It's the Lockline Articulated Mounting Accessory System. And basically this is a lightweight way of mounting a diverse range of accessories to not often used um, points on uh, recumbent bikes and trikes. Uh, this system here is our Kingpin Mounted Mirror System. Okay. So we start off with um, custom machined headset cap. And this just takes the place of the regular headset cap on your kingpin. And you use lock, these lock line components to extend uh, to another custom machine piece, our custom connector here that goes on the back of the mirror or um, our upcoming phone mount, whatever other accessories you want so that you can put it exactly where you need it. Almost Lego-like, huh? That, that's exactly the idea. So this system features also the rigid element clamps, and what these do is basically add a degree of stiffness to the system. It's not this uh, giant Dr. Seuss bendy thing over here. We will be selling all the uh, all the cart parts though, so if you do want a Dr. Seuss bendy thing, you can certainly make one. Um, but this is uh, the sort of system that most riders will actually find useful. Um, it uses, uh, like I said, these um, uh, element clamps in order to help secure these different parts so that they don't move around and come loose from vibration during riding, and it'll maintain position. All right, Quentin, so on the table here, you have a uh, 
TerraCycle branded trike stand. Tell me about this. So we've got the, tr the, the trike tight is back and we have it in both the tabletop version as well as a roll around version that we have over here. Uh, tabletop version right now is going for $380 and the full roll around one, very popular with shop mechanics, is going for 585. And can you convert the tabletop to a roll around? Is that possible? Uh, to be honest, you're best off getting a, a roll around from the start, uh, but these tabletops are really nice for if you ha already have like a rolling work surface or cart that you wanna use for trike repair. Uh, one of these is a really great solution for that, or if you want to um, you know, use it on an existing workbench. That'll wrap it up here at the TerraCycle booth. We have brought in my buddy Kaz, uh, the one of the co-owners along with Quentin, and I wanted to take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, you two and TerraCycle for supporting us here at uh, CycleCon by being sponsors and uh, for your long-term support. Uh, you, know, you guys are relatively new now to the business. You've been there for a little while, but uh, TerraCycle has been supporting us for many years and uh, we really appreciate it. So thanks a lot, Quentin. You're welcome. And Kaz. Thank you. All right. All right, guys, we are here at the uh, TerraTrike booth with uh, my new pal, Kyle. How are you, Kyle? I'm doing good, Gary. Thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to talking to you about some of the products that we have here. You're going to uh, kind of reveal what's going on, I guess, first with the uh, e-assist products that we have here. So uh, why don't we start here and tell us what you got? Yeah, sure, Gary. So right here we've got the Charge, which is our newest trike. This uses a Promovic rear hub motor. We've already sold hundreds of these after introducing it earlier this year, and it's been wildly popular, a very approachable price point and a great ride. Uh, we also then added the ability to put a boost kit on the Spider, which now we are showing here. Uh, has the Bosch uh, Active Line Plus motor, our same boost kit as everything but the EVO, and now you can cruise around on a Spider in style with a Bosch motor. Great. Kyle, before we go any further, so just for folks who don't really understand what a boost kit means, what, what is that? Yeah, so essentially it's electric assist while you're pedaling. So neither of these trikes are gonna be something that you just rev up and cruise down the, the road at 25 miles an hour without doing any work. What you're doing is you're pedaling the trike and you're choosing the level of assist that the motor gives you. And is it an add-on type of situation or is it uh, uh, coming from the factory that way? Yeah, great question. So the charge comes specifically as is with the Promovic hub motor, but then the Spider uh, exists as a standalone trike and then also does uh, have the boost kit available to add on to it. Great, okay. And is the, bo the boost kit available for all your trikes? Yeah, available for everything except the Spider ATC and the Tandem Pro. So we also did just add the Rover Tandem as a possibility for that as well. Sounds good. Now, I see that you have a pair of, uh, what, uh, wrist rests or some kind of grip? What is this deal here? Ah, yes. Yeah. So this is our new creation, the ATC Bio Grip. So Advanced Trike Concepts Division of Wiz Wheels has created these grips that work on any trike with upright handlebars. They're very ergonomically de designed. I think one of the most comfortable grips that I've ridden with. I've put a lot of miles on the spider with them myself, and they just fit really well without having anything under your wrist. It's just the hand that you're resting on it. Well, holding the bio grip up is a, a interesting looking seat. Uh, looks a little different than the other seat there. What's this about? Yeah, so this is our sport touring seat. It's been available on a couple different trikes now, including the Spider. but one of the new exciting things that has come with much customer demand is we are offering the ability to purchase and add the sport touring seat onto past or current TerraTrike models. So for those who don't find the current seat up to their standards or want a little bit of a different fit or feel, that's an option as well. All right, and uh, finally, folks, I wanted to thank uh, Kyle and everyone at TerraTrike Greenspeed for sponsoring us here at CycleCon. The Laid Back Bike Report is very appreciative of the support that TerraTrike Greenspeed has given us over the years, and especially for here at CycleCon. So, Kyle, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Likewise, Gary. All right. Guys, we're here at the Tie Trikes booth here at uh, CycleCon 23 with my pal Ken. Ken, how are you? Good, how are you? Okay, Ken. So we're gonna take a look at a couple, three uh, uh, trikes or quads here. What do we have right here? So this is our quad. It's four wheels, has a 1,000 watt motor. It has a rear differential for the two wheels. It's got 
uh, mid-drive motor, but not on the crank. It's actually in, in built into the frame. And then it has two um, shock absorbers in the rear. It has steering dampers in the front. It's a titanium frame. And it's all polished titanium. Uh, so we don't paint our bikes. You can get different color seating. But it's, and this is the fat tire version. You can also get a thin tire version, which is two inch wheels. Uh, but the fat tire is four inch. Uh, they're all 20 inch wheels. It's super adjustable. The seating system is very adjustable up and back, up and down. It's pressure foam. It's a two piece seating system. It's not a sling seat like most right. of the other people have. There are several accessories you can get different rear ends on this. So you can get a basket, you can also get it as a cargo bike. Same thing with the steering mechanism. We don't do lower steering because that physiologically is the wrong position. So we use like on a bicycle or like on a motorcycle where the wrists are in an upper position. Our, that's All our right. quad. Okay. So this is the Titrex Roadster. There's a few different options that are on this one that are accessories that are available. It has a different type of style rack. It also has fenders, both on front and rear. Uh, these are accessories. It has the same seating system. It has a 750 watt motor. Okay. Which are brushless motors, geared brushless. They're not direct drive motors. We use all 48 volt batteries. And we have a 20, there's 20 speeds. There's a two-speed planetary gear in the front, which is an FSA Metropolis. Uh, and then we have a 10-speed Shimano on our Shimano derailleur for the rear. What do we have here on the pedestal? Okay. This is our hand cycle. Um, the hand cycle is, again, like all of our trikes are, are super adjustable. And with this, the, for somebody to get in and out of a trike, out of a hand cycle from a wheelchair, the crank can move forward and backward, and the handlebars can go down, so that that's how you can get in and out of the bike. All of our bikes are at 18 inch seat height, so it's the same as a wheelchair. So when somebody's in a wheelchair, unlike uh, a top end wheelchair, which they have to get down on the ground almost to get into, on this they're at 18 inch and they go with a slide board from chair to chair. And we can put the hand cycle on any of our bikes. So you can get our quad in a hand cycle, you can get our Roadster in a hand cycle, and you can get our T250 in a hand cycle. Or if you're gonna go non-power, you can get our manual bikes as a manual hand cycle. So you have like a modular setup here, it's right? So you just pop setup. it up. That's very interesting, okay. Finally, this uh, smaller looking trike, what do we have? So this is a our 250, and the 250 model has a 500 watt 48 volt motor. This particular one is customized for somebody that's four foot seven that's coming this afternoon, and we built this specifically for that person. Uh, our standard will go from about five foot to about six foot five. And then to get beyond that, uh, we customize the frame. Because we manufacture in the United States and we manufacture these are all made in Connecticut, we can go up to, we've gone up to seven foot one for riders and as short as four foot seven. So we can do whatever size the person needs. The other thing with all of our bikes is because of our titanium frame and because of the way we build, we can have uh, a weight, we have a weight limit of 450 pounds. So we have a much higher weight limit than most of the other manufacturers. Okay, so um, all titanium, all made in the USA, in Connecticut. They're great trikes, they're robust. And uh, just check out Tie Trikes, guys. Uh, Ken makes great products here. So, Ken, thanks for showing Thank us you. around. Okay. Yeah.
All right, guys, here we are at the Trident booth at CycleCon 23 with my good buddy Tom. How are you? We're, do we're doing great. We're happy to be back here again. Uh, God only knows how many years we've, we've done this. Uh, but it's great to see, you know, number one, all the manufacturers here, but they're expecting a huge crowd here tomorrow, and uh, we'll be ready. All right. So you mentioned the word huge. We are going to go in the opposite direction because, Tom, you have brought something here that is teeny tiny, smallest I've ever seen. What the heck is that? So this is uh, our new model, which is the half pint. Uh, it is geared for children probably ages 3 to 10. And uh, it's something that really has been lacking in the industry. One of the problems with recumbent trikes in general is once a kid hits, you know, seven to ten years old, trikes are not cool again until they until they turn 50, and then they become cool again. And the only way we're going to get some younger riders uh, riding trikes uh, is to start them when they're young. Uh, so anyway, the, we made the half pint exactly like an adult trike. Uh, it is the lightest production trike in the world at 18 pounds, which is a, one of our claims to frame. But it's built exactly like an adult trike. Um, and it, it, it has surprised us the response we've gotten here. Uh, we have commitments for at least 50 of them this morning. Uh, my first batch is only 20, so we, we were, we're going to get back to uh, the welding tables and uh, weld us up some more frames. You've got some work to do. There. Talk about some of the, the specific features sure. of the half pint. I mean, so it is aluminum frame, which, is, uh, which surprised a lot of people uh, it, it, to give it light, light weight. But we used aluminum kingpins. It's got disc brakes. We, we uh, have scaled down brake handles, uh, 127 cr cranks on it. 14-inch um, wheels. Uh, originally, we were going to go with uh, 12, but the 14 just look better on it. Uh, it does have adjustable seat angle, and, and, and again, everything. Why don't you grab that wheel? So it, just this, so this is, it, it is a single-speed trike, but we do have an option for a three-speed Sturmy Archer. Uh, we'll, uh, we ha we've had one uh, small uh, kid around here who's been riding this thing all morning, and he was keeping up with everybody on a single speed. So this may or may not be necessary, but it, it will be available. Okay. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you, so go no, ahead. You talk about the rest of the features that you have. So, well, like I said, we do have scale down uh, brake levers uh, on this. And, and it does, believe it or not, it's Ackerman compensated steering on this. Uh, has a little idler pulley underneath, but we really wanted to make this exactly like an adult trike. You know, this is this is one of the features we didn't really want to scrimp and and change it into a kid's. You know, it, it is a mini adult trike. So, and is it affordable? I guess is the question so I was going to ask. This is going to retail at five ninety nine in the, in the U S. Um, and it will be available before Christmas this year. So, I mean, I don't know. Perfect, more you a say. perfect gift for under your tree. There you go. So, All right, sounds good. Available from us and from Trident Trike Steelers. Hello there, well, you, what is your name? Eloise. Eloise, what in the world are you doing here? What are you riding? A bicycle. A bicycle? Uh, have you ever ridden one of these before? Yes. You were riding yesterday, weren't you? Yes. I want to ask you about how much fun it is to ride this tricycle. Is it fun or is it boring? It's fun. Would you like to ride it all the time, like every day? Yes. Do you think your mom is going to get one and take it home for you? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And are you going to be riding it all day long, or are you going to stop? I'm going to ride all day long. That's what I thought you were going to say. All right, sweetie. Well, I hope you have a lot of fun. Thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. All right, Tom, so we have a four-wheel trucker here and uh, some special items on it. Tell us what's going on here. Yeah, and this has been one of the bigger surprises this year has been the emergence of four-wheelers. And uh, it's something we can't keep in stock, especially the electric version. This is a non-electric version, but only because uh, I didn't have one to bring here. Uh, but this is a variation of the trucker. Uh, this is the Trekker Quad. A uh, couple really interesting things about it. Now, this one is a, a New Vinci in the back. We do we do offer uh, a, a motor up front if you want, but it has a double suspension, and uh, it, it is suspended both in the frame, but then it also is suspended laterally, and it has double clutches. So if one wheel is off the ground, you'll never lose traction. Uh, one other thing that we've done, and this is available on all our trikes now, is a deluxe seat. Uh, this is a padded seat. This is actually, uh, we'll give a little plug to our Honor the Warriors group who's helping me here uh, at the show today. 
and we can actually customize this to your organization too. Uh, but this seat uh, was new to us last year. Uh, it was designed by my partner in Europe, Rudy Van Es, and he did a fantastic job on it. It's really comfortable, uh, and it uh, it does have a a little side bag that you can, that comes off, and you can use it as a fanny pack uh, when you're done. Finally, uh, the Tomcat, which we talked about last year, but any updates on it? There has. This is this has been our new. This is our newest trike, which we came out with last year, which was the Tomcat, which is an aluminum uh, frame non-folding trike. This year's new addition uh, has been electric, and this is uh, the first version of the electric Tomcat. Uh, we have one of the reasons Tomcat has been so important to us is that it'll fit a really short rider, uh, probably down to about four foot eight, and there really has been nothing. Uh, you know that would fit somebody this small, and, and uh, at the same time, it'll, it'll fit somebody as much as say six foot four with, with a long boom as well. Uh, been a really big seller for us this year, and since everything is going electric, we decided to make this one electric as well. Electric on this one, this will sell at thirty two forty nine electric. Um, one of the easiest electric to, to put together as well. Uh, you can be from box to riding on this. Uh, I'm good at it, and I did it in about 20 minutes, but I think almost anybody can be riding within 45 minutes of taking this thing out of the room. And so uh, speaking specifically of the e-assist on this, uh, you have both the different levels and you have a throttle as well? That's, that's correct. This is, this is still a class two uh, trike. Uh, it does have a 350 watt motor, but it does have throttle and six levels uh, of power assist as well. But it is street legal because it's a level two. So Tom, uh, lots of interesting stuff here at Trident. As always, you you never fail to bring surprises, which is great. And this is, you know, it's 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 part of the fun of being a manufacturer. It's just designing something. It's something number one, something new, but something that nobody else has. And right, and is, it's 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 it keeps me busy. And it's fun for the consumers, right, and your dealers who uh, always know they're going to expect something interesting. So, That's correct. and we we're we're already starting to think about new stuff for next year. So right, uh, I know we'll you're not surprises. I know me. you're not going to spill the beans. Yet. But let me also take this opportunity to thank you once again, after so many years, Tom, of uh, supporting the Laidback Bike Report once again, a sponsor here at CycleCon for us. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. Um, you're a good friend. And, and, and we appreciate likewise. it. We, 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 we appreciate the press that we get from you, and it's always good seeing you. All right, pal. Thanks. We are here with an old friend, Andrew, from the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee. We chatted with him a few years ago at Nashville when we were at CycleCon there about this amazing tilting trike. Andrew, it's nice to see you again. Great to see you again, Gary. All right. So there has been some updating and changes uh, with the tilting trike project. Uh, can you bring us up to date? Sure. The main thing we've added is control of the tilting mechanism from the handlebars. So before, you may remember we had some crazy lever under the seat. You had to take your hands off the handlebars, which on a moving bottom bracket recumbent is a little bit tricky. So now we have it so that when you uh, open the ratchet, you just move the handlebars down into the riding position and it's free tilting. And when you come to a stop, you just push them up and it's back to being a rigid trike. And as before, uh, the thing that we think we're bringing to the table is everywhere in between those two extremes, you get a, uh, a hybrid behavior that's not exactly free tilting, not exactly rigid, but it just acts like a taller, more docile bike. Um, okay, so that's really interesting. And now also something that I think is new, but you can fill us in. You have some collaborations going on, no, uh, on with, uh, notably with uh, Cruise Bike. So tell us about that. Well, uh, Cruise Bike, very generously donated the whole front end, which solved a world of problems for us, introduces some quirks that riders take a moment to get used to, but means we had a bulletproof drivetrain for the competition. And uh, anyone who follows Cruise Bike knows that they've been actively investigating, could there be some way to uh, use a tilting trike to open up their technology to more riders? and. Uh, we have taken their feedback from uh, Jim and Maria wrote it in Nashville, and they said, well, one, it's too wiggly when it's rigid. So we have, it's still not like a Terra trike, for example, because one, we have a very narrow uh, axle track, and two, they're on the end of swing arms, but it's a lot more rigid than it used to be. 
And they said, well, of course, the suicide shifter under the seat will never work. So we've addressed that. And now the issues are, okay, so you control it from the handlebars, but how are you gonna control it from the handlebars of a cruise bike, which doesn't have a pivoting uh, stem like that? Mm -hmm. And the other is, if the functionality meets their exacting specifications, how would we attach this tilting mechanism to a cruise bike? And they have four models. Uh, the rear triangles are different on all of them. So we'd have to come up with some adapter system. But hopefully, soon we'll start working on those, those points. Okay, so I guess that brings us to, I mean, what everyone would want to know about is the commercialization of the technology. So, so progress on that. What, would you anticipate a product uh, being out there in the next, what, couple years kind of thing? What do you think? Oh, that would be a pipe dream of mine, but I can't speak for the Parkers, of course. <laughs> and uh, in addition to cruise bike, which we'd love to work with, we'd also uh, like to see if this technology can help in the cargo bike industry. Uh, so, for example, especially in Europe, there's a bunch of brands that have big buckets in the front, uh, upright seating behind, and then a small wheel in front that you steer either with a link or with cables. And uh, we have developed at the Technical University of Delft this same type of thing, but intended for the front end. So you have to combine tilting and steering. And the next goal is to find some cargo bike company that has a frame that they're willing to donate to the cause that we can adapt and prove the concept. Okay, so how does the research, the design the development actually work? So uh, at the at UWM then, do you have like, so you have a series of students that come through and do they work on this as well with you? Yes, uh, students built the majority of this from the head tube back. The reason we have these beautiful uh, carved swing arms is because the student had a buddy with a machine shop with a water jet cutter. And if you have a water jet cutter, the thing you want to know is, well, what the heck can we water jet today? <clears throat> so uh, we have a, a new batch of students already in the fall that are excited about working on this. Uh, ASME has revived their human power vehicle competition. So we're thrilled to be able to go back and do that live. And they've added uh, uh, electrification. So we're fascinated by the possibility of how do you optimize the available electric power to do well in the competition. So uh, we will be looking at electrifying this in some way for uh, the competition this coming spring. All right, well, that sounds great. Very interesting stuff. We'll be uh, anxiously following what goes on with this and hopefully catch up with you at a later date with uh, even more development. So, Andrew, thank you so much. All right, pal, thanks. Thanks, Jerry. All right, guys, uh, out in the parking lot here at CycleCon 23 with uh, David McHenry. And David uh, has something he wants to show us. Uh, it has to do with Verabike. It's a company that we've had the opportunity to talk to back in Germany over a few years ago. Uh, but I guess there's been some updates, and we're going to find out what the story is right now. David, how are you? Good. Thanks, Gary. All right. So tell me, first of all, about your association with Verabike. What is this all about? Well, I was obsessed with uh, getting some more upper body exercise, so I was looking at hand cycles, and I discovered Verabike with their um, foot pedal and hand pedal designs, and about the time that uh, Martin started developing the um, the trike version of his product, the Vera trike, and um, then so I decided to order one from him, and I'm in Atlanta, and he's in Germany, it was right before the Ukraine war started. And um, anyway, he got started building the, the trike for me. So over the course of 11 and a half months, the six week delivery time became 11 and a half months, which was a little bit frustrating, but he came through with this thing. And this, I've ridden uh, recumbent bicycles and tricycles for 25 years. And um, this thing has just been a game changer. And uh, Martin's been really helpful on getting me set up in it and everything. Um, and this is actually the 2023 version. It's not the bike I ordered, it's different, but he made some improvements to it. 
and I'm just really pleased. Okay, David, let's let's back up a little okay. bit here. So, f so for the folks who really don't know that much about Verabike and, and this particular trike, can you just uh, briefly run down the features of a Verabike or, or trike? What makes them different than other recumbents in general? Well, the main thing is the drive system. This drive system is this module right here, this tube on top, which telescopes out and then can be positioned in different places on the frame. So that's basically your power unit that is modularized to sit on the frame like you see it here. And then um, there's seven different modes you can ride in because you have a separate freewheel on each handle and then you have a, a freewheel in the pedals. You can ride with just one arm or two arms or two arms together in a rowing motion, or you can, he calls this the cycling motion. And then, so you also have, you know, independent control of the pedals. So you can do all this independently. And then the other feature that's really uh, amazing is the lean to steer. This is nothing new for uh, front wheel drive trikes, but the, um, the mid bearing right here that joins the front and halves together. There's a pin here that sits at an angle and the geometry of how it steers is um, pretty, pretty. it's not unique, but it's uh, pretty unusual and it sort of makes it a lean to steer trike. His original design, he had a, a uh, the crank for the, the upper bracket for the bearing bracket for the crank up here and then the chain was exposed and he had uh, much different design on the way the um, the bottom bracket for the pedals was positioned and the chain was open which was uh, difficult because you'd brush your leg up against it and everything you couldn't keep your pants clean or whatever so you know he and he just tucked the chain away inside this tube and um, that's the major change in this bicycle in this tricycle from the previous version Good, good. David, one interesting thing I noticed right with your hands on there is the positioning of the shifter. Can you tell us a little bit of how that works? Well, both the hand the handbrakes and the shifter are located here because you can't have them on the handlebar. So you have to reach in here and grab the um, shifter right here. And this is a roll-off uh, shifter uh, gearbox, which is uh, gives you more range in gearboxes. So... Um, anyway, that's that's how you shift right here with the roll-off. It's a standard roll-off shift um, design. And, you know, roll-off is nice because it's can, you can shift anytime you want to in either direction without without pedaling. You, know, you never get stuck at the bottom of the hill in a high gear. Right, right. So you find that the uh, strain on knees is really uh, relieved. It's not a problem for you on this, right? Right. Well, I have a wonky knee, and on a regular trike, when I go to climb a hill or want to pump out some speed, I can feel it in my knee. And having the advantage of all this power in my arms, which are in good shape, lets me make the torque without pushing my knees past their limit. So that was a surprise on this track. Sure. How about the training wheels? I didn't ask you about that. What's well, that about? Training wheels are an option, and it is, uh, it's, it's worth having them because um, I thought I had screwed up when I bought this trike because it was so difficult to learn how. I always thought I was going to wreck it. Getting the, the gist of, of steering... Mm -hmm by it's hard to even describe how you steer it you just kind of it's like learning how to ride a bike <laughs> but it took a while but the training wheels are there so you don't flip over and they both Skylar and I have gotten up on the training wheels before but um, they're an option that I opted for and I'm glad I did I don't really think I need them now but um, I would recommend them if you're gonna get one okay sounds good so folks we are at a um I guess the first time Velomobile uh, booth here at CycleCon, as far as I know, with uh, our pal Ben. Ben, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Ben's been on the show talking about the bulk, and uh, I guess, Ben, if you could tell us a little bit about your association with Velomobile World and uh, a little bit about what's in the booth today. All right. Well, I am one of the first set of ambassadors. There's roughly 25 of us now here in the U.S., and we're working on finding ways to promote Velomobiles in the U.S., whether it's going out for rides, uh, doing promotional events, uh, group bike rides. Um, Velonauts of Wisconsin had a uh, session at Pedal Point Rally at a hostel shop this summer. And we're trying to get as much information out about 
um, velomobiles as we possibly can to promote it as a green form of transportation, um, health benefits, commuting benefits. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So, uh, so velomobile world brought uh, what four, uh, four folks. folks here, yep. and uh, they're really not for test rides today. Um, I know Jan has worked on. Uh, on sales, and these are all spoken for? These are all for spoken for, yep. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the Ambassador Program, because this is the vehicle, you might say, of, uh, of your promotion. Uh, what, what is the Ambassador Program, how does that work, and how can people learn more about that? Yeah, the Ambassador Program is a way to get as many uh, test rate opportunities throughout the U.S. as possible. We're massive compared to Europe where they've got dealerships. And it's always been a challenge here before when we had just one dealer for people to actually get a chance to sit in and go for a ride in the in the bike before you buy it. it it's obviously a big investment and you want to make sure it's something that's going to fit you, that's going to be comfortable, that's going to suit your needs. So by having Velomobile ambassadors spread out, mm -hmm. we've got that opportunity now. It's a much shorter drive for people. Very good. All right, maybe finish up with uh, some details about the bulk itself. Why the bulk? Why is that the Velomobile that's here? And tell us, you know, you've been riding it now for a while. I think you're kind of enamored of it. Tell me what you like about uh, the bulk compared to some other Velomobiles. Yeah, I've got, uh, I just passed the 2,500 mile mark on mine, uh, mostly commuting miles. Um, the thing that makes the bulk so unique is its modular design. We're able to fit a huge range of riders, everything from about five foot up to six and a half foot. There is no other model of Velomobile that can do that. And it's such a quick switch with the seat that it's something that can be shared uh, within a family or if you've got some friends you want to you know, lure into the world of Velomobiles, it's easy to set them up quickly so they can go riding. Um, I also really like the airflow. I came from a Quest XS where your airflow is entirely the footholds and whatever comes over the cockpit. And for me in warmer weather, that was kind of a no-go. The way the airflow is set up with the uh, intake in the nose, aimed up at your chest, getting the uh, handles up off your chest, it makes it so that it's usable in a much wider range of temperatures. You can close off the air vent for winter riding, so I'm able to use it as a year-round bike. Um, it's also the stiffest Velomobile, in my opinion, and um, I, I dare I mention that I also own a W9, which is reputed to be the stiffest, and does not, the bulk is stiffer which makes it very efficient for climbing and accelerating. Mm -hmm. So when you're pushing on those pedals, you're getting the most bang for your buck that you can. And I have found that makes a big difference in my overall speed. So you're going farther with less effort. Um, so whether you are looking for speed or not, the efficiency is gonna help you exactly. if you're going to the grocery store, right? It means yes. less effort and then yes. yes, I take this to the grocery store every week. And it's, I, I, I'm still sweaty when I get there. But I feel like How much I sweat would you say there is in this Velomobile when you are done from the grocery store? Are you wringing anything out? I am not wringing anything out. Okay. It's only four miles to the grocery store. Okay, good, good, good. All right. <laughs> ben, let's, uh, let's finish up with uh, something personal. I think uh, you have a YouTube channel that's doing yep. very well. You're making a lot of interesting videos. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, MN Velo Guy is my YouTube channel, and I've been doing a lot of videos focusing on different aspects of the book, uh, a little bit about the W9 since I own one, and also talking about just how practical and flexible Velomobiles are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people look at it and think, okay, this is just a race machine, but it's really not. It's I've been using it uh, since about May, mm -hmm. pretty much exclusively in place of my car. And at, at first it was kind of daunting, where do I park it? Yeah, how do I lock it up and secure it so I don't walk out and somebody's five-year-old has sat on the hood and cracked it. And once I got past that and got a system down, I found out that it's so much more fun to run errands to commute using the Velomobile than it was with the car. And I just don't miss my car at this point. Perfect. What a, re what a great replacement for the car. Absolutely. And a healthy choice. So MN, as in Minnesota, yep. Velo Guy. Yep. And that's the YouTube channel. Check it out, guys. He, he does great work there. So Ben. Thanks for all the information about the bulk and yeah. automobile world. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. All right, pal.
So we're here on the test track at CycleCon 23, and we have uh, actually interrupted the ride of a couple of riders here we're going to talk to. First of all, ma'am, what's your name? Chris. Chris, where are you from? Yellow Springs. Yellow Springs, Ohio, just up the trail here. Yeah. Well, uh, what have you uh, sat upon this morning? I have no idea. I just... Right. So let me take a step back. <laughs> And this th this would be a Territri Gran Turismo. So okay. this is a nice this is a nice truck. So you don't know what it is. Do you like what it is? Yes, I do. It's a very nice ride. Comfortable? Yeah, I've had a two wheeler for years. Have toured around the country, but this is the first time ever on a trike. I okay. like it. And it's uh, it must be very fast. You look like the kind of person that races. Uh, is it fast enough for you? Yes. You didn't want to answer that, I know. All right, well, great. Uh, thanks for stopping to talk to us, and we'll move on. To, do you know this guy, or is it a complete coincidence? Complete, but like that green. Oh, I think we started something here. So, all right, I actually know him. So, do you carefully back out or go forward, and thank you. Well, I am the 1963 Ohio Bicycle wait. Champion. Wait, wait. You are what? 1963 Ohio Bicycle Champion. Female. What does... Okay, what does that mean in terms of racing? Track bike, uh, uh, yeah. It was... Yeah, tell me. So what, 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 it was a race of some kind. Yeah, it, yeah. didn't have brakes on the uh, bicycle. My brother put me on it and said go. And I did, and I won. And you were the female champion. Yeah. 1963. Yeah. Before the man landed on the moon. I was around, yeah, so yeah, you don't yeah. have to give me that look. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, uh, congratulations. <laughs> Belate, belatedly, I'm, I'm out of here. Okay. What is your name? Dave. Dave, it's good to see you again. You're trying something new here, I know. What do you What do you got? Well, the last time you saw me, I was trying that lean machine. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm from Fort Wayne. Uh, looking at something with suspension. And so, had some back surgery a year ago. I've been laid up a little bit. So, trying to find something does this but well, i'm you know there is no question if you're looking for something with suspension you're not getting anything with more suspension around here than the steintrike wild one because it's got four inches of suspension all around this one and i want to try the uh, azo too so right right the the one with the titanium yeah, suspension the yes absolutely so all right well nice talking to you and good to see you again pal all right have a good ride all right i'm out of your way we have halted two more uh, unlikely riders here at the test track what are your names vanessa and I'm John. Vanessa and John. So let me first ask where you're from. Uh, Virginia. And that goes for you too, then I assume. So, well, thanks for coming all. Thanks for coming all that way. So, uh, a couple of Trident trikes. I see you're both riding. Do you know what you're riding? Yes. Oh no. I mean, yes. I mean, I know it's a Trident. <laughs> it's, a, it's an East Stowaway, so it's yeah. an E-assisted yeah. trike. It's actually really nice. It's really nice. Nice. Do you have ride. some experience with trikes? No. This is our first time. We're excited. We're checking out trikes to kind of get, you know, better health and stuff and see what we can really, op opportunities we have. So you, that's why you came here. So you were looking for trikes, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm on my way to see friends, but this was a stop on the way. So very, very nice. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the East away from Trident. And what are you riding here? <laughs> I know it's a Trident. The East Spike. Yeah. The East Spike. So it's a bigger one and also E-assisted. So you guys, if you buy, you're looking for E-assisted? We sure are. Yep. And how much riding do you do? Or is this something you're just going to get into? Um, so I've been riding a, a standard bike, um, and now I'm looking at changing up and, you know, getting a little bit older and looking for something a little bit more easier on the joints. Okay. And trail riding kind of thing, is that what you anticipate? No, uh, no mostly we got the uh, Dismal Swamp straight away, so it's a good 13 miles one way. I don't know what the Dismal Swamp is, but it's someplace I'd like to check out, I think. so. Virginia to the um, North Carolina border. Okay, okay. That sounds great. Well, thanks for taking a little time out to talk to the Layback Bike Report. You guys have fun? Thank you. We'll see. I'll let you get going. Bye. So we have stopped another rider who has not picked up a bike here at CycleCon, but evidently has brought one uh, from home. What is your name? My name is Daryl Jordan. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. The home of Trek bicycles. And this is not a Trek, this is a Rans, an old Rans, isn't it? What do you have? I have an old Rans V-Rex that I bought used. And when I walked into the used uh, bike shop, all the angels started to sing and I says, no, that's the bike for me. You, you knew instantly, did you? How long have you had it? Oh, about eight years. Okay. And do a lot of touring on it or just around town? What do you just do? Just around town. Most of my writing is urban writing, and that's my focus is urban writing. Oh, it's classic. Now, what did you hope to see here at CycleCon? Why did you come? 
Oh, gosh, Gary, you got me started. I don't know if you got enough tape. Um, okay, that's all the time we have for No, I'm just kidding. No, just, uh, basically, I'm interested in the urban riding experience. You know, a lot of people go out and ride bikes, you know, just to get out and ride on the paths and trails and whatnot. But I just, you know, I ride, uh, I shop, you know, with my bike. I commute with my bike. And I go to events around town in my bike. And Madison is blessed with a wonderful bike trail network. So it makes it possible. The Capitol Trail, one of my favorite ones. Yes, and you're welcome to stop by Madison again. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the invite. So, Daryl, thanks a lot. You you're take welcome. care and have a good ride. All right, another unlikely rider coming off the test track, and your name is? Uh, Julie. Julie, it's nice to meet you. So, uh, do you know what you're riding here? Uh, yeah, it's a cat trike. Um, Villager, yeah. exactly right. So, what's your impression so far? How do you like it? I like it. It's it's different. I like the way it, it moves. It it turns well. Uh, you feel like you're kind of close to the ground, but it's probably just because you're laying down. You are you used to trikes? Do you ride trikes? This is the first time I've ever ridden one. Okay, so I mean that's part of the excitement is being kind of low and feeling a little close to the ground. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a sporty kind of feel. This one also has the their uh, their helping handles as mm -hmm. well. So I don't know if you've had a chance to use them to sit down. You'll probably use them to stand up, yeah. but that's a nice feature as well. Uh, so are you going to be trying a lot of things out here? Uh, yeah, I, I was glad to find out about it. So it's like it's a good chance to especially be able to ride it. How far have you come? Um, we've come from Urbana. Urbana, Ohio. Yeah, okay. So All right. 45 minutes yeah, to an yeah. hour. Yeah, not too far. All right. So uh, you're going to try some other stuff out. Are you thinking about eventually buying a trike then? Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to excite all the people inside. So I won't hold you up anymore. Get back on the track. Thanks for talking with us. Thank you. Okay. We have stopped a, uh, a combination. It's turned into some sort of uh, oddball trike tandem here. And uh, unusually, we're going to start at the rear of the tandem. I guess you would be the stoker at this point. Hello, what Hi. is your name? Robin. Robin, where are you? Is this your husband? It is. Where are you guys from? We are from New Bremen, Ohio. New Bremen, where they have the Bicycle, Bicycle Museum. Museum of America, absolutely. Which uh, I was wearing that shirt yesterday. Oh, I love that right. place. All right, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, I'm neglecting I your, your captain here. You. Well, what is your name, sir? Uh, I'm Frank. Frank, it's nice to meet you. So let's talk a little bit about what uh, you guys are riding. What, what is this contraption? I believe this is the Sun Tandem. The Sun Seeker Tandem. Sun -seeker. It's, it's, yeah, it's a combination. Actually, they take uh, two trikes, I think. Take the front wheel off the yeah. second and hook you up, and you've got a tandem. Looks like a lot of fun. Is it fun to ride? It's a blast. It really is. Have you have you ridden trikes, bef uh, trikes or tandems in any combination before? We both have trikes. And what do you ride? I have a 559 yeah. cat trike. Nice. And you as well? Yeah, I have the uh, DeMont. The DeMont, yeah. so you're both on cat yeah. trikes. So. Yeah. Okay, and you're loving this, obviously. Cool. Uh, you thinking about maybe adding to the stable? Um, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> we'll see where that goes. Uh, very non-committal. Well, thanks for stopping to talk to us. You guys uh, continue your fun ride. Thank you. Thank you. All right, see ya. All right, you too. Yeah. Well, guys, this brings us to the very end of CycleCon 2023. Honestly, by wide consensus, the most successful CycleCon ever. Huge numbers of uh, people here to ride trikes and bikes, enjoy the company of their fellow riders, and to meet so many people from uh, across the country and around the world. So. We were privileged to be able to be here to record interviews with some of these folks and give you guys hopefully a nice flavor of what went on. So let's, uh, let's start it off with uh, my uh, right hand man, the videographer who is? Trey Burgoyne. And? Lisa Burgoyne. Larry Seidman. Phil Paulson. Janet Paulson. And uh, speaking of being on the right hand side, my wife, the amazing. Marilyn Solomon. And I am Gary Solomon, the host of the Laid Back Bike Report. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time around. All right, guys. Woo! <laughs> now we don't know who's no, that's, 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 that's mine. mine. That's mine.
Thanksgiving. This is the thanks. Yeah. This is Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's a holiday here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that. Oh. Yeah. You know that. I was here for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turkey? I had a day off. Turkey? Yeah, I went Did out to get Turkey. It? Yeah. 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 Like that, it's a map, right? And it's just wild thing, this. Wild. I don't even really know what we're doing. We're, we're going to talk about, I'm going to introduce you. Okay. Um, as your uh, as your incarnation is the owner, uh, co-owner. Owned uh, by the owner. A co-owner of Recoming PDS. Janet PDX. Morgan owns it. Yeah. I am owned by the owner. All right, guys, here we are at the uh, Bachetta booth. No. No, 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 it's a baquetta. Oh, you say baquetta now? I say baquetta. That is the true I, Italian I know that is true. But baquetta. those boys in, in, in Florida, they uh, said baquetta. So just don't call I, it bruschetta. That makes me hungry. No, no, I will say whatever. Baquetta. Baquetta, thank you. Guys, we're here at the cruise bike booth uh, with my pal Larry Osland, who um, kind of uh, showed up here with all these cruise bikes. Are you kidding me? Can you, is that bad or not? So when you go to our website, you'll see that there's pull down menus. You can pick your drivetrain, pick your seats, pick your brakes, pick your. Can you pick your nose? Uh, I, guess I was right going to go there and I thought, no, this is on film. No, totally but, cutting uh, that out. Okay. Uh, but can you pick your friend's nose? No, let's not try that. That's going to. Okay. <laughs>